There we go. Hopefully this looks okay. Uh, it's kind of my a side looks angle. terrible. There we go. <laughs> uh, everyone has to let me know how this sounds. It's a very experimental setup. I think it's going to be okay though. Just let, let me know if this is good or bad. I got the chat right over here. Uh, and this is right here. This is the uh, the area that I've built in my new basement that is going to be for the uh, the B-roll shooting going on. Okay, so it sounds good. It does, but my screen is showing your Twitter feed. Oh. <laughs> it is. One second. That's Which dumb. is probably that's, more that's interesting than the face. But... That's really dumb of me. Uh, hang on. I Somebody says I'm louder here. than you. Um. Hilarious. There we go. <laughs> it's ultra dumb, but whatever. It is. It's fine. Okay. In that case, all right. All right. Some midweek hiccups. What can I say? I thought it'd be fun to to do this. All right, so so I pre-ordered this back in, I feel like it was like 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 late summer is when I did. And uh, somehow, I mean, it, it got shipped here by DHL and arrived today, and I got it right here. The, uh, the PC Engine Mini, it's kind of a pleasant surprise. I was not expecting it to show up because of everything that's, you know, going on in the world right now. So I asked uh, Chris if he would want to join me on stream to unbox it. I'm too quiet. I'm just now. glad that the check that I sent you cleared before the PC Engine Mini. <laughs> um, okay, so somebody's saying that, that I'm a little bit too quiet. I mean, I can turn or myself up a little up bit too loud. To. I do. I have one right here. I'm I'm talking right in the lavalier right now. Let's see. Oh, I can turn it up though if need be. You just need to let me know. No, it sounds good. Uh, I'm pretty quiet, huh? That's that's interesting because it looks fine on the the levels over here. It looks fine, um, but I can always turn it up. Chris, this might make it get louder. I can turn mine down. Uh, this might make it get a little bit louder for you. Uh, well, I mean, I guess it's <clears throat> maybe this will help. No, it doesn't look like it's gonna help. Uh, I mean, just uh, let's let's try this. It might make it well, so it's too loud. I turn mine. I turn mine down quite a bit, so I don't know if that's. Okay, so now, oh, I might. I'm looks like I'm so... like I might be peaking right there. Uh, okay, so now let me know if it sounds any better. If it's too loud, does it sound good or? Chris sounds great now, but what about me? Do I do I sound okay? I mean, my levels are in the red right now, but let me know if it's if it's too loud. Much clearer. I'm you're super. super I'm you're pretty super... loud in my ears, and people are saying you're too loud. In it. Okay, how about how about now? That's a little bit less. I'm very loud. Uh, I mean, it's because I'm using this wireless mic that is not. Okay, so it's it's perfect now. Perfect. I guess so. Could be louder. Yeah, good. It's okay now. Okay. All right. In my ears, it now sounds good. Okay. Okay. I'm doing my best. If I can get this. Looking good. I mean, I think you could probably expect more stuff like this in the future because this is a fairly streamlined uh, setup here. So, you mean more stuff in more unboxings on a live stream? Yeah, I mean, why not, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, so here we go. We're going to uh, go ahead and that should work. And should be looking good now. Look at that. So, um, I got two monitors going on. I'm seeing what the I'm shooting with the with the camera and also the the uh, chat. So let me know if there's any issues. It should be good. Um. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Try is uh, rewiring some stuff in his setup so that he can 
do this analog DAC episode and he wants to integrate it into his system in a way that is useful in the future. And he's like kind of obsessed and caught up with it right now. Oh, so uh, should we do this? I'm going to yeah. start recording. I'm going to record on my camera as well so that I can, I can release it on the channel. I mean, we might end up doing a mini on the channel with it, so mine as well, right? Yeah. Uh-oh, now I just lost signal. Come on, is it going to keep on doing that? Hang on, that should not be happening. Oh, did it just do that? It shouldn't have done that because I was... Are you not allowed to record and, and output? No, I should be. It should be not be a problem. You know, you're always telling me how cool this camera is. It is, but it's I it should not that should not be happening. Yeah. Um you know what might need to happen? I don't know. Is I might just need to use instead of using this the screen over here. Let me just do this. I I'll, I'll I'll try to record again, see if it cuts it out again. Let me just see what happens. Oh, I forgot I have a list of all the games. All um, right. I'm going to grab it real fast. Looks like I'm, I'm recording now. It looks like it's okay. So we'll just wait and see what happens, if there's any issue. All right, so let's, let's take a look at the back of the box here. You can see what games are on it. Uh, what's kind of interesting is how many more Japanese games there are. And this is essentially the same lineup as on the U.S. version. Except for, I guess this has a enhanced version of Gradius on it, or Gradius, however you want to you want to say it. Uh, they don't say Grad. I can tell you from firsthand experience that you should not say Gradius ever. Okay, because I, no. I I never did. Grad, it's Gradius. Okay. Uh, I guess they redid the music on it. Why would you do that? I guess it sounds a lot better. Than what? Than the original version. Hmm. Um, so I can get a little bit closer if you want me to. It's got some good stuff on it. A lot of stuff that I've... I've got the list here in front of me since a lot of that's in Japanese there, but... Yeah, well, I mean, you got the... Here's the game. I think some of them have... Some of even, like, the games that are listed as Japanese have, uh... English versions, I guess. Like you can choose if you want it English or Japanese, or you just have yeah, to. Yeah, what is it? there's one game on here you can hold down the run button when it uh, when you start it, and it will choose like I think it's Ninja Gaiden or Ninja Ryuken Den, hmm. which is right here, I assume. Did we get any? Oh yeah, we did. Uh, it does have Snatcher on it, but it's like in Japanese, so it's kind of, it's kind of a tease. That that so we got we got Lords of Thunder here, and in Japan they got Rondo of Blood. Right, but they're all on here. What do you mean? I mean, it has the American version and the the Japanese games on it. All the systems have the same oh. games on them. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, except for I guess the uh, the core graphics version. It's going to have an enhanced yeah. version of Salamander on it. Oh, wow. Because I was saying the other night that I thought that, that the American version didn't have the first Bonk on it. But you're saying it does, but it's going to be like the Japanese version of Bonk? Um, or do you think pick? Because like, I have the list in front of me, and it has Bonk's Revenge, but not right, Bonk's. Right, it has, yeah. So I assume that that's Japanese PC Genjin, PC Genjin yeah. right there, right? Right here? Yeah. I can I can turn this camera a little bit so you can see me manning the the camera at the same time. <laughs> so yeah, should we uh, should we open it up? Definitely. Thank goodness, Chu Man Fu's on. <laughs> All right, let's do it then. Oh.
You should make this a, a an ASMR video. To start, <laughs> to start rubbing it, you know. Well, you know, you'll be able to hear me just in the camera microphone and the clips that I'm recording. So, probably, you probably can't hear yourself off in the background. All right. I can't, which is good. You might occasionally hear my sump pump going off. Is it raining there? Hmm. Is it raining there? No, it just. It was just slightly poorly done outside. Uh, so when water pumps out, it, some of it comes out of the the pipe and it oh, it goes results in. in like it just like kind of some water staying outside of the house and going back down again. So it's just like this endless loop. Uh, they were supposed to come and fix it, but then everything happened. They had to delay it. So we got the... Uh, Oh, it doesn't. I bet it doesn't come with a AC adapter part, does it? It might not, but I'm, I mean, I'm sure you must have. Yeah, I can. I can yeah. dig one out. Uh, should I save the save the actual what? system for last? So we got a you know, power HDMI cable. I mean, you don't have to do that. It Whoa. always drives me nuts when unboxing videos do that. Hang on a second. I just heard like a. Here's the manual, and here's the warranty card, and. Here's some styrofoam. Hang on, I just heard my phone make a noise. That's not good. It's an, a, oh, an amber alert. Man, the first time that ever happened around here, it was like two o'clock in the morning and it scared the bejesus out. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're looking for a, uh, a 2014 Black Ford Escape statewide. All right, so let's, uh, so let's go check out the controller, shall we? Yeah. I heard some people were not very happy with the controller, just based really? on what uh, some Is feedback no in, in Japanese or? forums were saying. Hmm. I it feels decent. I mean, it's like Does the plastic feels feel a lot like more hollow. Uh, but as you know, it does not have the, the rapid fire just, toggles you, on it. You could tape some nickels in there to give it more weight. <laughs> to artificially make it heavier. It does not have turbo, but the the standalone you have to ones you can you can one. buy will have them. It's like what the Genesis Mini did. You know, you had to buy the six button controller separate. Right, right. But I mean, who uses the turbo functions on these controllers? You know, I mean. Well, I mean. Man up a little. <laughs> Uh, well, it's always it's so funny that you know see the the oh, Konami logo Hero on the back says of it. The original PC engine had no turbo. Is that is that true? I'd never. Um. Yeah. I guess. I mean, I've seen I've seen control. white controllers that do not have the turbo on it. Oh well, there you go. Um. But uh, the can the cable feels a lot longer. It feels longer than the ones on with Nintendo systems. That's for sure. I mean, well, I think is, a, a PC Engine controller has like an 18-inch cable, so anything would be. Yeah, this is actually way longer than I was expecting. I mean, it's quite a bit. I mean, yeah, people are people are confirming in the chat that the original release of the PC Engine did not have turbo on the controller. That would explain that, I guess. That's interesting. I did not know that. Give you a nice little view of it. The font looks a little bit different to me on, on the face. I don't like the select and uh, run, run button fonts. I mean, it feels good. It feels good, but I've never felt what a, what a fresh PC Engine yeah. controller feels like, so I can't really... I'm not well, I guess we'll find out when you start playing it, right? You know? Yeah. Uh, I have heard, so the PCB on here actually has the uh, stuff to enable um, rapid fire on them. Uh, a guy, uh, Chris Tang, uh, who is like, you know, he's known for commentating Tetris and also like, you know, he's done a whole bunch of stuff, but he's a huge PC Engine fan and he got one and he uh, 
opened his controller up and it has the the actual uh, stuff on it to in, to enable rapid fire. So if you were to swap this out with a uh, like a like a, a different controller with the, with the actual toggles on it, I think all you need to do is bend the pins inside them a little bit to line up, and it will work. Hmm. All right. There's, oh, there's nothing in there. All right, so I'm gonna save the console for last. And I'm sure that's just the HDMI cable, which I'll just use one of the HDMI cables I have laying around here. Yeah, it's just a just a standard HDMI cable that you, you get with basically, basically everything. That's one of the things I liked about the, the uh, NES and SNES minis is that they had like Nintendo branded HDMI cables in there. But this seems like just like any HDMI cable you'd get with anything. All right, here we go, system time. There it is. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask about that. Can you can you pull that off, or is yeah? It... I mean, I don't know. I'm sure there's nothing underneath it, but just the fact. No, that there is. Up... Oh, there is. Yeah. Oh, duh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but that's kind of awesome, right? Yeah, that is really cool. I saw a comparison picture online. Of this this seems like it's about ten percent smaller. Than <laughs> yeah, actually... I mean, it would be hard to make it much smaller than that probably well i just don't know why they bothered making it smaller at all you know well you, like, you gotta what? you gotta i mean that's part of the appeal i guess of it but that's the but, appeal of pc engine is that it's tiny yeah and they had to make it even smaller or else it's there's nothing to d differentiate it it does have it has two controller ports well that, that already makes it better than the original <laughs> Somebody in the chat is saying, I thought these were delayed. Uh, I so if, if, I guess if you, you pre-ordered... You, you called up Konami and kind of name dropped them <laughs> No, 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 no. If you pre-ordered in, if you pre-ordered this version specifically mm -hmm. uh, before a certain date, then those ones shipped. But they could... Uh, TurboGrafx-16 is delayed, and I think I probably the, the core graphics is delayed. Uh, but this one they had produced enough before everything happened. And they could cover the pre-orders before a certain date. I mean, this is just like it's just an order pre-order from Amazon Japan. Do you have to pay shipping for that? Like, uh, yeah, pay, but it's not very much. Time. I mean, I was that... I was surprised that it. I think it was like, like six seven dollars. Oh wow! Yeah, that's and they cheap. they shipped it with DHL, which I guess they do. <laughs> and what's crazy is that it it took like three days to get here. I mean, oh, wow. it shipped on, on like Monday, I think. I tried to buy one off of Amazon Japan, but I noticed like you have to create a whole new account and everything. And yeah, but that, you, you can make it so that the the, the uh, site displays in English. Oh yeah, no, no, I saw that. I was just like, I figured, you know, I didn't have to do any of that stuff. Yeah. Because, yeah. I, I mean, you know, I don't even know. Like, if you ordered one of those, like, today off of Amazon Japan, I don't, I'm don't. i assuming you would not get it until way later, right? And right, because have... now they've already shipped the ones that are... Yeah, and I already have the American version on pre-order, so... Right. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have a PC Engine, so I can't compare it to a... A real one. Try has has one. Try has two, actually. If I go get mine and hold it up to the screen, and then you hold that up to the screen, we, we could try it if you want to. I was I was a hundred percent joking. <laughs> that doesn't work that way. Uh, what's kind of cool is this. So, Seems like kind of a tease, though. You know. Yeah, you can't actually put anything in there. Yeah. I mean, it would be cool if they actually made it so you could put 
you know, you could put cards in here because like they did with the Genesis Mini. Right. I mean, that was one of the coolest things about it. All right. Well, someone in your chat says they just ordered from Amazon Japan a few days ago without a pre-order, and they got it yesterday. So. Oh. Well, there you go. Maybe maybe you can still get one. I don't know. I mean, honestly, like I don't really play on these things much, if at all. Oh, I just think that they're they're just cool to have. Uh, I guess yeah. <laughs> and I mean, the fact that this of all the mini systems exists is kind of impressive. I think. Oh my god, Artemio's in the well, chat. Well, I don't. I mean, I don't think I'm not as impressed that that came out. I'm impressed that we got. Like it makes perfect sense that that would come out in Japan. Yeah. But the fact that they made a Turbo Graphic 16 one for us is a lot more and they, surprising. And it's also like, that glad. they made a, a core graphics version. Yeah. Is that one is that one different in any way except you said it comes with like a Yeah, I heard that it has a enhanced version of Salamander on it. Yeah, I don't I don't like the sound of that. Like why you don't need to enhance anything. Well, I think I mean I I think it has the original versions on it as well. It oh, just has right. like like I was, redone. I'm curious to see what Gradius looks like on this now. Or I guess. Yeah, I mean, like... I just heard it's just because of the. It's just the music, is better. Hmm. All right, so should I should I hook it up? Yeah, you got a lot of people in your chat that are really itching to. Uh, okay. See um. Will you give me a second just to kind of go and switch it over here? Who me? Yeah. Will you will you keep an eye on the chat while I get it all hooked I'm up all and running? Over. Um, I realized that I didn't switch my, <laughs> I didn't get all of my other stuff set up for this. What, is, what does that mean? It, it just means that I am unprepared slightly for a minute here. Why? Well, that's no problem. Uh, so just give me a minute to go ahead and get this ready and I, it shouldn't take long. Yeah. Um, so if you don't mind, can I talk about some of the games that are on the system? Oh, absolutely. I... Absolutely. Please do. Um, maybe talk about some of the games that are not on here. Somebody asked if Bloody Wolf was on here and the answer appears to be no, which is, which is pretty crappy. But then I know at one point they were saying Legendary Axe wasn't going to be on here and that still appears to be the case. Which yeah. is, uh, at least in my opinion, I bet it comes down to the fact that they don't know who even has the rights at this point for some some of that stuff. Well, you know, uh, Legendary Axe was uh, developed by a company called Victor, mm -hmm. and like who who like where did they go? I don't even know. You know, so that might be like what you're saying. Like who knows who owns the? Although, did Legendary Axe ever come out like for like virtual console or anything like that? Because if it did, they must know. Oh, okay. Somebody sitting in the chat says Victor is JVC, but is JVC still around? I, mean, I, I realize that's a stupid question, but I can't remember the last time I saw anything for sale that was like JVC uh, brand. Uh, Morpheus wants to know if Bomberman's included. Bomberman 93, uh, amongst the TurboGrafx 16 games, you get Bomberman 93, and on the PC Engine, you get Bomberman 94. So uh, you have two Bomberman. Almost ready. I just got to find a USB cable here. I was so preoccupied whether or not I could do the first part of this stream that I didn't even think about. All right. He's somebody in the chat named Retro Junk says that uh, Legendary Axe was never on the virtual console. So um, I'm sure that it has to come down to some kind of licensing issue. Right. You know, I mean, that was one of the best games on the Turbo Graphic. Someone says JVC makes like Bluetooth speaker stuff now, but I wonder if this is like one of those things where I always thought they were part of like game or something, Lucas Arts or something for some reason. I don't know why. All right, what else we got on here? Air Air Zonk, Alien Crush, Blazing Lasers, Barman ninety three, Bonk's Revenge, Kadash. That's kind of cool. The Kadash. Yeah, especially you know working designs. Yeah. Is it, it? Does it have the English version on there? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, it's listed under TurboGrafx-16 games. So I'm just reading off the, t- the TurboGrafx. Uh, so it's cool that that one's on there. Dungeon Explorer, that's good. Uh, Lords of Thunder, like I said earlier, that's the only, uh, I guess, CD game that uh, that we got. Uh, where was I? Military Madness. Uh, both Newtopia and Newtopia 2. That's pretty cool. Uh, New Adventure Island, that's one of my favorite games, actually, on the system. Ninja Spirit, Parasol Stars. Uh, is this the only sports game on there? Is Power Golf? Like I don't. Why did they even bother putting Power Golf on? I mean, I guess that's a first party title, so I guess they own the rights to it. But um, I think they could have left Power Golf off, and nobody would have complained. <laughs> uh, Psychosis, R Type. Thank goodness. Uh, Soldier Blade. Uh, that's my personal favorite uh, shooter on this. Well, R Type and Soldier Blade are my two favorite shooters on the system. It's kind of interesting that Space Harrier is on there, since that's a that's a, a Sega property. Yes. Um, All right. I mean, it's cool that it's on there, but it just kind of seems you wouldn't have thought that would happen. Uh, Victory Run, and oh, I was wrong. There are two uh, CD games on there because there's Ease Book One and Two, and uh, and then there's Splatterhouse. And, uh, yeah, well, Morphe, I guess I don't know why you deleted your message there, Morpheus. He said, oh, no, no world-class baseball. I don't know if you were saying that jokingly or not, but I was actually kind of bummed out that world-class baseball is not. Uh, or one of the Power League games uh, on the PC Engine side, uh, just because those are good baseball games. But, you know, I realize that I'm in the very much in the minority that I actually want to play any. Uh, so for PC Engine titles, uh, so I already mentioned Rondo of Blood. All Dines. Uh, this was one I was really surprised to see on there. Uh, I don't know if I'm even saying this right, but uh, Apare Gateball. Uh, I don't know if you ever played that one, Corey. Uh, Apare Gateball. Uh, I don't remember how I found out about that game. I, I was playing that game like 10 years ago. Uh, it's it's kind of like, what is that, croquet? You know, that you can set up in your yard with like the wire hoops and the, the wooden balls. Um it's like a video game version of that. I think that game is really fun, but I didn't realize that that game was popular enough that it would end up on on the mini system. And uh, I already mentioned Bomberman 94. Uh, and it says Bomberman Panic Bomber. So I guess that's another one. Uh, Chowaniki. Uh, Daimok Aimora. So does that mean, I guess that means they got a super graphics game? Yeah, well, I think uh, All Nines wow. is as well. Oh, yes, you're right. I'm sorry. You're correct. Uh, so we'll have to check that. I'm curious how the emulation is going to be. Uh, Dungeon Explorer again. Oh, they got Fantasy Zone. So there's another uh, Sega game. Uh, they got Sapphire. Wow, I didn't realize that. I, I oh, really? Check that one out too. Yeah, that's, that's what it says here. That's Giga pretty huge. And Setsu Sapphire. Okay, um, almost ready here, guys. Yeah, you know, that runs. Uh, we already mentioned Gradius. Oh, they get Gradius and Gradius Two. Now Gradius Two is a CD game. Uh, right. Go go for no yabao, however you want to yeah. say it. Yeah, I don't know how to say it either, but uh, that's a really, really, really good game. Yeah, great music. Um, just Psychin Necromancer. I'm, I'm sure I just butchered that. Okay, so I'm uh, going to switch over to my <laughs> other... Uh... What? I'm, what? I'm... I don't know what happened to him. Uh, Nectaris, which is Military Madness. So we get that one. Both Newtopias, we're going to know about that. My... Uh, we got uh, the Japanese version of Ninja Gaiden. PC Genjin, which is, of course, uh, Bonk. Salamander, which we talked about. Snatcher, which we talked about, but that's just going to be in Japanese, so that's no fun. Uh, oh, Star Parodier's on there. That's kind of cool. We should check that one out. Uh, Super Darius, that's pretty cool, too. Super Momotaro Densetsu 2. Uh, I don't know anything about that. Super Star Soldier. He's book one and two again, but of course that would be in Japanese. And then uh, Galaga 88, Dragon Spirit, and uh, oh wow, Spriggan. So as you might expect, they got a lot more uh, shooters than we did because that was the case back in the day uh, as well. That's right. All right. All right. Everyone getting, let me make sure you're getting game audio here. I'm going to switch to English. Um, yeah, it's Galaga. 
and do my best with this. I already got somebody in your chat making fun of my pronunciation. <laughs> Gal Go ask Modern Vintage Gamer. It's Galaga. Come on, why am I not getting music here? Oh, hang on. No, actually. What's going on over there? I'm trying to make it so it's to be playing music, but it's not. What do you mean? Um. Oh, I'm sorry. Where you grew up, it was pronounced differently, so that must be the way it's pronounced around the oh, world. Oh, this okay. is why. Got it. Um, I don't know. What's going on over there? You asked me to set up USB HDMI streaming. I'm done in two seconds. I know, I know. You're right. Yeah. I have this cool music playing there. I was trying to make a very oblique Seinfeld reference. <laughs> oh, what's going on? You asked me to get a bra. I'm back in two seconds. Let me just uh, raise up my microphone, and then we should be good to go. Sorry, I like I was so concerned about getting the other the desk shot set up, and that I could hear audio that I forgot about everything else. Messed it all up. Uh, Morpheus, yeah, it's a, except uh, legendary axe isn't there. I'm not. All right. I'm not pleased about that, but other than that, it seems like it's a pretty good. Everything, uh, everything sounding and looking good now. Uh, uh, chat. Uh, oh, I. Well, so now you're not sending the video signal over the Discord anymore. You know that, right? I'm not. What am I sending over the Discord to you? Uh, it says no signal. Well, yeah, I can fix that. All right. Well, you don't have to. Let me know if that shows up. I don't need to see anything. Is, is it there now? Uh, no, but it's in your stream, and that's really what's more important. Huh. I mean, that should be... Whatever. Let's let's not. Yeah, I'm not gonna screw around with it. Not weird. All right. So let's take a look at the settings, shall we? I mean, these are the important ones, important things. You know, you got user manual and. Okay, so this is probably like a four, like a four X scale, or no, if it's a seven twenty p, then it's a three X because you got the borders. Stretch the fill, but I don't. Well, I don't. This is probably a pixel perfect right here, because most game. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it might be because most games are 256 pixels wide on the Turbo Graphics. So this is probably a pixel perfect for those, and this might be uh, maybe just like a standard 4.3, or maybe it's a uh, pixel perfect for some of the wider games. And of course, my favorite. Somebody's asking in your chat, is that is that a Turbo Express overlay? All yeah, the look at that. Screen? That's pretty sweet. Okay, so if you hit run, you get a CRT filter, so. Okay, so it's just on and off. Okay. You got different wallpapers. Uh, most importantly is that there's a completely black wallpaper. Oh, you can turn a screensaver on and off. Kind of like that one, but I mean, I'm just not a big fan of wallpapers. I prefer nothing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, menus. Oh, look at that. Okay, so you can choose between a core graphics and a PC engine menu design. Hmm. Well, I guess that's easier because then they don't have to make a different version of the software for. Yeah. I, since since we went to M2, I always like to see who was like the the main people who worked on it. In okay, so uh, Yoshiyasu Masuchita is the, uh, he was formerly of uh, SNK, and he, we did interview him. And then you That's got, cool. uh, so what's really fun here is, uh, so you look at the, the planners here. Um, uh, uh, Takeyuki Komabayashi, he was, when we were there, he was, uh, he was kind of like our contact person. Um, he, you know, got us in and, you know, took us around and everything. And uh, I'm not sure what his role was there. I, I know that he previously worked uh, at Deep Shop. 
like in their their storage uh, warehouse. Uh, and he's like was working at M2, and then he was actually the the director of the Genesis Mini. Oh, that's cool. So it's always. It's always fun. Hey, somebody they... in the chat is saying, "Was try okay after the hot sauce?" Oh, I, I, I didn't hear anything. Uh, for the record, I'm I'm going to be having the try the the hot sauce this this coming Sunday. What are you talking about? Uh, so somebody sent us some hot sauce of uh, mm. the bomb hot sauce, mm. Mm -hmm. which is like I guess ridiculous hot sauce, and we're supposed to eat it on stream. And he oh. tried it this past past week. And you're gonna. And you're gonna do it. Huh? I'm gonna do. It. I'm I'm terrified actually. Cause I'm. <laughs> yeah, I just I just wouldn't do it. <laughs> Somebody sent me food and was like, "Here, eat this on your stream." I'd probably just say no. So, what do you feel like is the the first game that I need to? Oh, hand. Oh, okay. Well, so you can select the thinking... console from here. What? So oh, look, what? you can select the console. So you can switch over to to oh. Turbo Graphics oh, 16 okay. mode oh, here. Wow, that's cool. the menu music is super good. I can't hear. Well, because I can't hear it, right? Yeah, I mean, of, people in the chat I'll are. Take the word for it. As long as they can hear it, that's the important part. Um, it's really well, I, good. The only thing I was going to say about games is like I would just start off with like games that it's easy to just kind of fire up real quick and play for five or ten minutes before you. Yeah. Before you like launch a game that you like, you know, would sink your teeth into. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know what you know. You should play whatever. Turbo graphics or PC engine games like you like because then you'll have something to say, you know. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with our type first. Oh, oh sounds that's... like uh, someone in your chat named King Nothing. I think had some of that the bomb hot sauce. And uh, uh, you wanna? I won't. I won't repeat exactly what he said, but basically he got uh, some stingering thing. Okay, so you definitely see the the shimmer going on in the bottom of the screen there. So this is not. So but that just means you didn't. You need to select a different video mode. Yeah, I'm, I'll see. So I assume that you can. Okay, so start in, uh, or select and run, or what get, it brings you back to the menu here. Oh, so you can't. Oh, we got a dollar ninety nine donation from uh, Alex Lazar, saying this is a good idea. Thank you. Uh, okay, so I guess let me just make a save state. Now is probably as good a time as any to uh, tell everybody that part of the condition of me uh, being on your live stream tonight was that I have to match any super chat donation that anybody made. So like, <laughs> so now I owe Corey two dollars. <laughs> okay, so I, hang on, I want to switch out here and see what the. Uh... Let me, uh, okay, so that was just that, and let's, let's, let me just switch to this and see if there's any shimmer now. You got a uh, $1 donation from someone called WRN Hokey. Oh, it's, it's Warren Ho Hokey. Oh, look Who? at, interesting. So the, that's not good. The shimmer is still what? there even mm. on the more narrow screen size. The heck was that? Uh, that's the sound it makes when there's when a donation comes in. Oh, nice. Interesting. So, well, I mean, interesting in a bad way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that there shouldn't be no shimmer on one of these, you know, at least make it so that but I mean, I don't know if this is a 256 game. But, oh, it's like, oof. That's uh, that is not pretty. I mean, it's very, very, very obvious right there. Hey, uh, so in the chat, I guess, I guess Try is watching. Yeah. And he said that Artemio is saying that this game is a weird resolution, which is true. Oh, so that's I see. The shimmering is sort of. This, I guess this is not a good game. Almost inevitable. Okay. 
And then I don't want to put you on the spot and give you stage fright, but uh, uh, Joe is here from GameSack. That's okay. So, I told him I was going to do this. Joe did a, to did a live stream last night for the first time in a very long time. That's that's a great honor. Yeah, it's, it's, always, it's always a pleasant surprise when he, when he shows up. Yeah, Artemio says this game is two is 352 by 240. Oh, weird. Oh. Okay. So I guess... So I wonder if it would do. I mean, let me, let me make another one here, and then see what. Or, hang on. Let me check here. So maybe if, let's see if it's even closer. If I just like max it out, it probably won't be. But I mean, you know, it's always worth a shot. I love that loading. Oh, uh, I mean, it's 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 a little bit better. It's still pretty bad, but I mean, I don't know yeah, if I mean, that's I'm the stream. I have the stream going in like 144p, just so I'm not using up bandwidth. Uh huh. And you can see uh, it you know, since we're since we're video chatting, and even I can see the yeah shimmer. I feel like it's not as bad. Right, I, like on this, I'm like I'm bad at this. Sorry. You were telling me earlier you can you can beat this game on one guy, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like I see, Joe's saying it's it's far worse, but I feel like it's like the the shimmers, like the uh, uneven columns are bigger, but it doesn't feel like like it like. Like a mess, I guess. Before, like it looked clutter, but I guess here you can really see it in the background too. Okay, so our team is saying it would need to be three X and waste a ton of space. And this is probably the only game on this entire collection that is that resolution, so it wouldn't even be worth it. Yeah. Hey, uh, Moth Boy is asking, uh, how does do you feel any uh, latency, like controller latency? Uh, so I've heard that uh, it has between three to five frames, which is kind of crazy. Ooh. Yeah. Um, and as Joe's saying, like, I wonder why they don't have horizontal interpolation. I, you know, I don't know what the deal is with that. Like, why they just don't do it? Uh, I mean, the only system. Only uh, mini system that is released that has had that is the Super NES Mini. I I have no idea why they just don't do it. And I mean, this is something we've been talking about for a while. Like we don't understand why they didn't do it on the Genesis Mini. Like is it just like something that they don't want to do. I mean, it's not it's it's not the fact that they don't see it, they can't get it right. It's just I don't think that they even try. Well, I think they know that the vast majority of people don't care, you know. And I'm not saying that well, that's a I mean, good excuse, but, you it know, doesn't... that's the world we live in, unfortunately. Yeah, but, I mean, the 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 Super NES Mini had it, and it doesn't matter. I mean, they should it, it should be, like, a standard thing. I mean, I think that it should be in there no matter what. I mean, I, I don't disagree, just... Um, let's see. Should we see what the uh, the CRT filter looks like? Sure. Um, got some bonk. Oh, that's not bad. What? The, the CRT. I mean, that CRT filter looks oh, a lot I'm better watching, than this. watching on a delay, right? So Yeah, the CRT filter looks a lot better than the one on Genesis Mini. Yeah, let me, let me I right. still looks... I mean, it's definitely uneven here, too. Um, unless it's... I mean, it's... Uneven. Um, let me see if it lines up on anything else. I, I wish you could just change the options from within the game. 
Hier. I mean, it really doesn't make sense why you wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, Professor Who, I mean, I think that that is what's going on, basically. Is I think that they they are overworked. I just took on too many things. This is still uneven, too. See, to me, that's, like, the bigger thing, because, like, who... Like, you don't have to be, like, you know, pixel peepers like us. You know, you, you can just be average, you know, Joe Gamer, and I think you can turn that on and see that it doesn't look good. Right. And, and not want to use that. Well, this seems like it's just a kind of a basic overlay and blur. It doesn't have the noise that the Genesis Mini had. But I mean, like, like Joe's pointing out, like they don't, they're not turning up the brightness to compensate for the right. fact that they have hand lines, and so it just looks not, not good. Yeah, I mean, it's like, and that's even the, uh, I mean, like scalers they have scan line overlays, like don't, except for the OSSC has been trying to incorporate them, and like Try really likes the. Uh, the scan lines on the Ultra HDMI, the N64 one, because it has like a gamma. Uh, it like increases the gamma, so it looks gives it a kind of a glow to it. Do you notice any sound delay? Joe is saying he says he thinks he hears sound delay. Oh yeah, I mean right here you can see it. Well, man, I can't. Yeah, I mean it's like. I mean, it's, he's like up, like in the mountain, when you hear the hear it. Mm. You know, like his. Yeah. Oh, I. <sighs> yeah, that's. There, it's that's definitely apparent. Uh, I mean, it's it's hard to tell like input lag right now. I mean, like Bonk always had kind of like I always felt like it had a bit of a weird input lag or like a weird momentum to it. Well, I mean, I feel like if you fire up a shooter, you're gonna find out. Well, I guess you played our type, but. Well, I didn't do very good at our time, so maybe that's... Man, that's I didn't want to see anything, but... but yeah, um, let's, yeah let's, I mean, I've actually played, it. like, a faster-paced one, like Soldier Blade or something. Yeah, that's how I'll try it. I'm hitting... Let's try this one. I'm kind of curious to see how that... How this is going to look. Yeah, somebody was saying in the chat that it has an overlay that it, uh... Oh, I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. So I'm waiting for it to... Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it would have been cooler if it had been more of like a, a McWill mod kind of look. But, yeah. you know, obviously that would not be... I've never used a Turbo Express, so I can't tell you what it, if this is how accurate yeah. this is. Well, I mean, I haven't either. I get, but you know, I've played a, a Game Gear, and so I'm just kind of assuming that, and maybe I'm falsely assuming that the screen is probably pretty similar in the two as far as the quality goes. You know, just because that was the quality of a, a color LCD screen back then. Right. I mean, it, this is this is a fun novelty. I can't see anybody really <laughs> playing this way though. Mm, 
I, I definitely feel a little bit of lag. I'm not super sensitive to it, but I mean, it doesn't it doesn't feel horrible right here. But I mean, I don't know. What do I know? I mean, uh, you know, I we still get comments on the uh, the Mega Man X collection saying oh, there's like severe input lag on this version. I didn't. I didn't detect it when I was doing that video. I mean, I don't know how bad input lag has to be before I notice it, but I mean, I don't spend that much time playing devices that have input. Lag. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's... But I could imagine if you if you spent more time like really critiquing well, that kind of stuff, I think you would develop more of a sense. Right. I mean, sometimes it's apparent. Uh, one th time I can think of it being really apparent to me is when I uh, hooked up the, the NES Mini to uh, what is like my living room television. It's not like it's an it's an older mm -hmm. HDTV. It's like a 2008, mm -hmm. I think. And I could really feel it on there. Yeah. I mean, this is a fun filter, right? I don't, let me just go to something a bit more. I keep on selecting the wrong one. Hey, you got four ninety nine from Mark Smith. Oh, thank you. Who asked, do you think this will support original controllers via a USB adapter? That's a good question. I don't like if you got like a like I have one right here. I have a USB adap adapter for my NES controller. I mean, do you think you could like I don't I guess it depends on like the protocol. Probably not on this unit. It's Maybe once it gets word, but... gets hacked. Well, I'm sure it's I mean, going to get hacked. I I'm sure it is too. I mean, it's hard to really say with the... I I guess the uh, the PlayStation Mini is like the best once it's hacked is like the best machine ever. So I can't really? really see a lot of the appeal in hacking something like this, except for just for the form factor. Yeah. But are you saying that when you when you hack uh, the PlayStation Mini, can you put like other? Oh yeah, yeah. I guess like, it's it's very you're not very just good. playing PlayStation games. You're playing other stuff too. Yeah, you can you can play other stuff too. Okay, I don't. Like, I, you I can never even put like Dreamcast really on it. Dreamcast? Wow. Yeah. But I've heard that it's it's. I gave away my PlayStation Mini. Oh. <laughs> I remember the stream you did with it. Well, uh, you were on the stream. Oh, that's right. I was. <laughs> that was a good stream. It was. It went for. It was really long. I remember. I think it yeah. was. Because you, you you played like every game on it, didn't you? Uh, no, I couldn't have been every game. I, I really don't remember. I had a good time with it. I just I ended up giving it to a friend of mine who he's like, you know, a really casual gamer and like he's not gonna and he's not gonna like notice the things that we notice as far as like, oh that's the PAL version of that game. Right. Emulation is not perfect. Like, you know, he and I he's the friend that, you know, he and I had PlayStations together back in the day. And like now he has kids. So I gave that to him and so now he can play PS one games with his kids and like none of them care or know about any emulation problems that I have. Right. I mean, for better or worse, I mean, that's... I mean, I'll say it every time. That's who these machines are made for. Yeah, It's just 100%. the fact that I can't think that there's, a, like, a casual audience that are going to be like, I want a Turbo Graphics Mini system. <laughs> that's very true. I mean, I don't... I mean, maybe, I guess, you're going to have that guy who had, like, a Turbo Graphics in, like, junior high school or high school and, like, you know... Yeah, but it seems like the amount of people out. that are that person... I mean, I only it, like, ever financially knew... viable for them. <laughs> yeah, I only ever knew one guy that had a Turbo Graphics. I didn't. I didn't know anybody. Yeah. I mean, I told that story a couple times on my own show, but it was just kind of sad because, like, you know, like basically, like in my high school, like all of the gaming geeks like hung out together because, of course, this was back when like 
you know, it wasn't cool to play video games. And so we were all, we all just kind of stuck together. You know? Right. And um, this guy kind of hung out with us, even though he wasn't that much of a gamer, just because nobody really wanted to hang out with him because he was annoying. And so, you know, we kind of, we put up with him more than anybody else would. So he hung out with us. <laughs> but I remember, you know, at that time we were all playing like computer games. You know, we all had like 386 and 486. And, um, and, you know, we would be talking about, you know, whatever we're playing, you know, Wing Commander, X-Wing, or, or whatever. And, like, he would always try and tell us, no, I have a TurboGrafx-16, and it's awesome. And, like, we didn't even want to hear it. We are just like, shut up, dude. That thing sucks. <laughs> oh, but that's, that's the thing is, fun. like, I, I mean, I can't speak for everybody else, but I'm guessing that nobody else at that table had ever even played a TurboGrafx-16. And it's like, it's one of those things where, like, I wish I could go back in time to that lunch table and just be like, you know, what, like, what games do you have? You know, because for all we know, like, he might have had, like, the most baller library of TurboGrafx-16 games. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, especially if he was buying stuff on clearance. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, we, we all missed out because we were being, like, ignoramuses about it. Did you see that cool uh, CD load-up screen? I did. That was really cool. I gotta say, I they mean, put the wrong popular opinion, but I, here. I'm kind of sad that Gate of Thunder is not on here. I I, I like Gate more than I like better. Lords. I know. I mean, that yeah, that's I an unpop unpopular position to take, though. I think. You think it's unpopular to say that Gate of Thunder is better than Lords yes. of Thunder? Yes. Really? Can we? Can I ask the chat room then? Like, is that really most people like Lords better? I I I bet people like Lords more. Like, I want to put that on, like, I want to make a Twitter poll or something. I just, that's the first <laughs> time I've ever heard anybody say that. Like, I, you know, I mean, Lords is cool because, you know, it's got the, the, oh, you really feel the lag electric, in this. electric guitar soundtrack and everything. But other than that, like, yeah, I think I mean, Gate of Thunder. Like, the, the soundtrack is cool, but I feel like the, in this especially, like, the guitars, like, the wailing guitars are almost, like, too high pitched. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, that's just, but when you were, if you were playing that when you I'm were not like 14, a big metal guy you would have anyways, thought that was like, really yeah. cool. You know, I don't think you would have been like, mm, these guitars sound a little bit too loud or, you know. Right. Who, who mastered this? It doesn't sound right. You mean, oh, you mean the, uh, just like the, the actual version too. It just sounds. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm saying, I'm saying at 14, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have been saying things. Right. You would have just, you would have just thought it was awesome. You know? Right. At these. And like this I mean, soundtrack this is, is rad. Like, yeah. But I think the soundtrack in in Gate is a lot better too. <laughs> oh, I think so too. But you I can definitely feel the input lag in this game. Somebody in the chat says Gate of Thunder is better than Thunder Force 3. I I agree. I'd, I'd agree with that too. I, I if Joe's still here, I'm not sure if he would agree with that. I think that Thunder Force 3 is maybe is Joe his... says he thought Lord he thought Lords of Thunder was mastered wrong even when it came out. <laughs> that, does, that, that doesn't surprise me. Really it did. doesn't surprise me. Yeah, I could see like fourteen year old Joe Redifer being like, uh, he's, yeah. Joe's got an Joe incredible says, yeah. ear for audio. Is better than Gate of Thunder. Yeah, the lag is real bad on this one. Oh, Matt. Matt says that. Thunder Force 2 is better than Thunder Force 3. I agree with that. I mean, I, I don't know if I agree with that. And then William says your mom is better than Thunder Force 3. <laughs> well, that I'll, um, let, I'll let her know. Yeah, I should, she'll probably be excited, excited to hear that. Like, well, next time you're visiting with your mom, if she like makes you something to eat, be like, Mom, this, this is better than Thunder Force this 3. This pasta is like better than Thunder Force 3. <laughs> I don't know what that means, dear, but thank you. Yeah. Uh, I will play Rondo next. You got a $2 donation from MK Iron Fist. Oh. Who says they're slightly bummed. No mini has matched uh, the Super NES. It's Super true. Nintendo. I mean, the Super Nintendo mini is... It is about as good as they could probably get, I think. I mean, it's clear that they really just made a better product uh, 
than the NES. Like they, I can't remember what the team is called that made it. I'm sure someone in the chat will tell me. It's like this. I can't remember what they're called. Is it like not? Uh, is it not an in-house team that does it, or is it? Um, nerd. That's it. They're called. I can't remember what nerd stands for though. Do you think the N is Nintendo? I don't think so. No? So is it, is this a third party? Oh, someone says it's Nintendo Europe R&D. Oh, okay. Then it is, I guess. All right. Um, okay. Leave it to the Europeans, you know. It was probably a bunch of Germans that did it. What are you looking for? I was looking for Rondo. Oh, even that's different then, too. That's kind of fun. What do you mean? Oh, you can hit oh. start. I hit select before to see if it would let me go into the into the file manager <laughs> <laughs> on the, uh, the press start screen. Or press run. And Smoke Monster, you're totally right. I mean... Smoke Monster needs to figure out how we can get these loading screens implemented. Yeah, um, right? And to get them into the, the mister. That'd be cool if, if cool they, they were, like, an option. Uh, oh, unless you're talking to yourself, it sound, I think tries asking if uh, Rondo has the original or the redone VO. I can't. I can't hear it, so... Um... Whoa! Whoa! No, 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 okay, no, no. Don't get NT excited. Like, I, I've uh, fallen for that, too. Thank you, uh, Will William uh, Hetherington. Yeah. That's one of thank my peeps yeah, there. Yeah. Thank you for, for, for joining. And another $5, $5 from Matt Ferris saying, you guys, you gents are awesome. I'm late to the check. Can we measure the input lag? Uh, I'm not sure we can measure it. Um, but, I mean... It's it's definitely there. Uh, uh, Chris Tang, who is a uh, he's a I guess he's maybe like an esports personality now, but he's uh, he's done like a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, he's like like a gaming world champion and all this other stuff. He measured it like the shot uh, at 120 frames per second, and it looks like it has between three and five frames of lag, which is Disappointing. Oh, and we also got a. There's a. Geez, a twenty four ninety nine from Paul Sutton. Oh, my old friend Paul Sutton. Thank you. Pause PSO two for this. Better be worth it. Well, so what? Was, I tried playing PSO two last night, and the servers were down for maintenance. It broke my streak of daily login. I don't mean to yet again put my ignorance on display, but I don't I don't know what PSO two is. Uh Fantasy Star Online too. Oh, like oh all right. People are still playing that? Well it just it finally got a English release on the Xbox uh Xbox One. Oh, this is like a new game that just came out. Well, it's been out in Japan for eight years. But it finally wow. came out here. That's I did I had no idea that came out. That's pretty cool. Do I think this will drop in price like the Genesis Mini? I don't think that the Turbo Graphics 16, when it when it uh, releases in the U.S., I don't think it will sell very well. So I think it will drop in price. Although it's it's possible. Do you that, think you're even gonna walk into a Target and see a Turbo I, Graphics? I mean, Mini? I don't think so. I feel like they might be. I think I might have heard that it's Amazon only, but I'm not oh, sure wow. if that is true for for the U.S. So maybe it'll be rare later on. But I mean, I like I think if it releases in stores, like it's it'll be on clearance pretty pretty quick. I'm guessing. Okay, so Amazon exclusive, I guess. Hmm. I mean, I unfortunately the audience is limited. Uh, the controller feels really good. I think 
But I've heard that some Japanese players are not very happy with it. But I think it feels pretty good. I mean, it feels like all the other mini console controllers where it almost feels a little, like, too light and too hollow. Mm-hmm. So, uh, someone called Ashura in the chat is saying, mm -hmm. I think the only reason we got the U.S. version is because it was easy enough to make cases and do everything identical hardware-wise, which I think is true, but... I mean, how many more of these systems do you think they're selling because it comes in a TurboGrafx-16 form fact? Like, like anybody who is like a TurboGrafx fan enough that they would buy a mini system, you know, I feel like they could have just sold the PC Engine Mini here in the States. and like, Yeah. You know, they would still sell a bunch of them. Yeah, I mean, the reason I didn't want... I wanted this one versus... The Turbo Graphics is the Turbo Graphics Mini like looked really big. <laughs> yeah. See, I like I bought uh, maybe I'm just stupid. Like I got the Turbo Graphics 16 Mini because like I already have uh, a PC engine. I don't have a couple PC engines. It's like I don't need a mini version of something that I already have as much as like oh it'd be cool. Like I haven't had an actual American Turbo Graphics 16 console in a pretty long time. So oh, okay. Uh, like, I thought it'd be cool to have the mini system, although... I mean, really, the, the primary reason that I order these systems is to do live stream. Right. I mean, just the fact that, that they made this and it exists, I think, is was, was a big yeah. selling point for me. It just... It's crazy that it, it exists. So, people who know their Castlevania lore, is this supposed to be the town from... Castlevania 2. I assume that it was always supposed to be the town from Castlevania 2. I mean, if it's not, that would be pretty silly since it looks the exactly exact the same. same. Yeah. All right, people in the chat are saying yes. Okay. I still have not watched any of the Netflix Castlevania show. I I have not either. Uh oh. I need to summon uh need to summon basement door dash here real quick. What? My beer's empty. <laughs> That's some slowdown going on. So Really? Yeah, well, I mean it's intentional. I mean, the audio lag doesn't sound as bad here. And I, I don't notice the input lag is, is bad here. So far, uh, Lords of Thunder has had the worst input lag. I mean, I can understand the, the, the idea of not fixing the slowdown. I mean, I would prefer that they yeah, it don't. Does, it doesn't bother me. If, I mean, if it's no, just slow I, down, it doesn't originally. bother me either. I mean, I like if they wanted to, I guess they could probably put a, a toggle in for it. I mean, it, that's that's kind of the thing. A lot of people have been saying, like, I think that M2 is like they're like a lot of their most more recent releases have been much less elaborate, and that seems like something they would have done at one point is having. You know, slow down on a on a toggle, along with this other stuff. I just, I think they just started taking on too much stuff. Oh yeah, you def There's definitely audio lag when you pick up. Oh, someone's saying that Collection of Mana is not good. Is that true? I mean, it's... I, I bought it, but I haven't even opened it yet, I don't think. I don't I saw, understand like, why they, they force I borders. Be... I mean, the fact that... I hate having, having to have borders on there. I mean, I understand people liking the borders, but I would prefer to have 
no borders at all. It, but and it's to just to just not have the option at all is so annoying. That would be annoying, but I, I mean, I don't, you, I don't know. I, I think that's the kind of thing I wouldn't even really notice. Like, oh, there's borders, whatever. Yeah, Jordan Davies brings up a good point. Because I'm, I'm still curious as to why we got a core graphics mini in the PAL region, even though we got an official PAL release of the Turbo Graphics. That's true, because it would be the same mold as the American Turbo Graphics, just with like different. I don't know if they're using stickers on those systems or if they're, you know, somehow printed on there, but uh, that's a little bit different. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know why they would do that. Although, I mean, the, the Turbo Graphics sold so poorly in the PAL region that I don't know if it's still the case now, but at least up until recently, you could still buy a brand new in the box. Uh, PAL region turbo graphics for uh, not very much money at all. You gotta do it every time if you can get that without freeze frame. Yeah. That's like the, the Castlevania version of, you know, jumping through the door and Mega Man. Right over the fire in uh, Golden Axe. Or what? Oh, just I, I told this story on my channel. Any, anytime I play Golden Axe, you know, you have like the between each stage, you have like the little campsite. Yeah. And then the little gnomes show up and they steal your stuff and you have to take it back. And then after you pick up the last thing and the gnome uh, gets out of there. You can move your guy around for like three seconds before it freezes, and then it's and then it goes to the next thing. And so when I was a teenager, my my friend and I had this thing where we would go pick up the stuff around the campfire, and then we would immediately go run over and put our dude over the campfire, because then when they're standing still, they kind of like spread their legs apart, like right. they're in a sort of like attack stance. And yeah. I mean, you can I think you can use your theater of the mind to you yeah. know yeah. put two and two together there, but. It's one of those things where still to this day, like, I don't even really think it's that funny anymore, but it's just like <laughs> habit, you know? Like, it's just good luck. Like, you got to make sure you, you uh, you know, I always play as the, as the Gilius Thunderhead. Like, you got to make sure Gilius's boys get toasty uh, to make sure that you have a good game. <laughs> I used to be, I used to always choose Gilius Thunderhead, but now I'm, I'm all about, about Tyrus Flair. That, uh, that that Amazon booty when she walks upwards. Well, you got, you got five dollars from Miles Kirsch. Oh, thank you. Who is in Buffalo, New York? Oh. So Corey connection, and he's drinking a hazy little thing, which is a very good beer from Sierra Nevada, which I have the sign for them right over my right left shoulder. Ah. Left shoulder. I don't know so. if if uh, if Miles Kirsch knows that I grew up just outside of Buffalo. Well, why else would he have brought it up? I'm sure he must. You never know. It's on your Wikipedia page. Oh, well. <laughs> I've never, I've never seen our Wikipedia page. I'm joking. I know. I mean, you never know, though. I mean, that's true. That's how you know you've made it. Is if you put up a Wikipedia page about yourself, <laughs> and it doesn't get taken down. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I agree. You guys should do it. All right, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna crowdsource you a Wikipedia page right now. Uh, I mean, is it is it the second one you got to go down? Which is one you got to go down? The there we go. Is it is it the last one to get Maria? Well, I got the key, or I gotta not drop down one yet. I didn't think you had to drop down in order to get Maria. I thought you just had to have the key. Is that not? I well, maybe I do. Remember. I haven't played this game in a really long time, but. But there, that's not. that's where one of the paths split off, though, right? Oh, geez. Yeah, game. Yeah, Joe's saying you don't drop down at all. Okay. But that's why you had to have the key. Did 
do you uh i mean i don't know how often you play this game but do you uh when you get maria do you switch to playing as maria or or no well um like i like playing as maria but you know i'm told that that makes me some sort of you know <laughs> something that rhymes with wussy <laughs> That's, that's the easy mode, right? I mean, it's easier, but I just like the way she handles and everything. Like, it's kind of cool, you know. But it's like when I when I played through the game, you know, I switched over and played as Maria, and I liked it. But uh, you know, but then later somebody told me like, "Well, it's like playing it on easy mode," and I was like, "Well, I, I guess that's kind of true." <laughs> I always think of the voice acting for for Maria and in Symphony of the Night, where she says like Richter, save your strength. At least that's what I always thought she said. Richter. Well, I can't hear any of the voice over here, so I just have to. I'm kind of doing it in my head. Would you consider, because someone just mentioned in the chat, they think Rondo of Blood and then Symphony of the Night and then Castlevania 4, I guess you're saying that's their top three Castlevania games. Uh, Do you think that... Okay, what? Go ahead. I mean, that's, that's not my that's, question, really. I mean, this is definitely the best Castlevania game. Yeah. Uh, I think that... I really love the first one. Yeah. I think that would probably be my second favorite. What would be your second favorite? Symphony? The, the, the first one. Symphony of the oh, Night, well. I really like as you're well. You're saying this is your favorite, and then you're saying that... The, the, the Castlevania right. 1 on the NES okay. is, is my second favorite. But So what I was going to ask, so I've been, you know, I got a little project that maybe I'm working on. I don't know. We'll see if it goes anywhere. But uh, I'm trying to create, like, this list. Uh, not where it's my opinion, but, like, the, the top... The top 10 or top 20 Super Nintendo games of all time. That's um, by, by like sort of making aggregate scores for all these different. Like, I'm not trying to make it my opinion. I'm just saying, like, I'm going and finding like all these other people's top whatever list and using that to like score each game and then have like an aggregate score where you say, okay, this is like, you know, the crowdsourced top 20 list of Super. But anyway, uh, do you think, like in, in just in your personal opinion, not not what you think everybody else thinks, but do you think that Castlevania Four is a top ten Super Nintendo? Game? I don't think it's a top ten Super Nintendo game. I would say I I I think it's a top twenty, but okay. not top ten. It's with the Super Nintendo library, it's really hard to just say. Like right. you can't really cut it off at ten because that doesn't even really cover all of the you know, must have like, you know, A-list titles. Right. But I mean, would you, would you rank it there? If I was making a personal top 10 list, I would, but like I've, I've spent more time playing like the early Super Nintendo games. You know, I didn't have a Super Nintendo growing up. So like for me, a game like F-Zero and, Castlevania 4 would both be uh, on my top 10 list, but they, they would definitely, neither one of them would be on this aggregate top 10 list because, you know, they're, that list is filled up with a lot of, like, you know, a lot of the great role-playing games and whatnot in the Super though, that, that I never got to play because uh, I didn't have one. But that's why I was saying it's like you can't you can't tell the story of the Super Nintendo with a 10-game list. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I mean, uh, what? I have no idea what I even would even rank as my top top Super Nintendo games. Well, you got two Canadian dollars from uh, from Johnny Millennium. Oh, thank you. I told uh, if you're still here, Johnny. I told my wife. I just thought it was funny. Like, uh, you know, he announced, I guess, that he and his wife were expecting their first kid. Oh. And, um, that's right. That's and, right. 
Yeah, but so I mentioned to my wife that, like, you know, if, if anybody was ever going to question, like, how much of a man Johnny is, like, he almost, he was, like, you know, dying in bed of pneumonia and still managed to get his wife pregnant. So <laughs> that, my wife, I told, I told my wife that. That made her laugh. Um, he's, what, what do you say? He says, like, PC Engine or PC Boomer? We're like PC Boomer. I, I yeah, because we're old guys, I guess. Oh, uh, yeah, I I I, I assume that's what he meant. Oh, he says they, that was six months ago. Okay, I guess I guess uh, that occurred pre uh, pneumonia. I gotta say, uh, this game brings out the bloody tears pretty early. In, in the game, which is, I, I feel is, is the best Castlevania song. Oh, I agree. And it's kind of it's impressive that the, it occurs this early in the game because it seems like it's it's more of a almost the final stage music. You know, my favorite thing about Castlevania 4 is, is being able to walk up the stairs backwards. Yeah, it's funny. Somebody was asking earlier in the chat if you could do that in this game, if you could moonwalk up the stairs. <clears throat> What's interesting is I don't think that any of... I think the Nintendo systems are the only ones that include epilepsy filters. Wait, what do you mean? Like when screen when you get screen flashes, uh, the Nintendo systems have like these filters that trigger that soften the flashes or remove the flash oh. flashes. I did not know that. Like an anti-epilepsy measures. Hmm. I just, I mean, I know they warn you, you know, if you're epileptic, that you might have an issue, but I didn't realize it had an actual filter. That's kind of cool. I mean, is that a thing that happens a lot? Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to be funny or anything. I'm just honestly asking, like, I mean, do a lot of, I always hear about that kind of stuff, but I mean, do people actually, like, is that a common occurrence, having an epileptic seizure from playing a video game? Um... I mean, I've, I've, I've never witnessed it happen, happening to anybody yeah. <laughs> or known anybody has happened to, but I, I, I just remember it being in all, all the manuals and stuff. Yeah. So you got, uh, you got another $2 donation from Donnie again, and, uh, he wants to, he's asking both of us how we're coping with the lockdown, but I feel like you've got two kids. And so like, you're the one, <laughs> like, I'm not coping with anything really, yeah, to I mean, be honest I'm, but you might be. It's like the 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 kid factor makes it a bit more challenging, for sure. And the thing is, it's not even so much entertaining them. It's like like all the homeschooling stuff has been extremely time consuming and and challenging. So your your kid's school has like an expectation of like here are the lessons and like well, you I mean I. I mean, they have a, a slight expectation. I mean, they they gave everybody, uh, they didn't give it, but I mean, they loaned everybody. Every single student, they were able to loan them an iPad. They has, wow. you know, they have stuff for, to, so they can communicate with their teacher. But, you know, there's the, there's only so much stuff you can do. I mean, we're, we, I mean, my wife and I are very obviously will say, you know, I have, I, really quick on a side note, I always hated like the the scrolling background there. It's like, I don't even know what's going on. Really but, weird. Yeah. It's like it just it's it's moving the wrong way. Yeah, like whoever they put on that, just like that was probably their first job in the video <laughs> game. Uh, but you know, we didn't we didn't we didn't sign up to be teachers, and we just like have no yeah. desire to do it. I would just have a really hard time making my kid do any of that stuff you know because i could only imagine like when i was that age you know the idea that like, i don't have to go to school like i'm you know 
I'm not going to be the bad guy and like tell my kid like, no, you still have to do schoolwork. You know, like I'd be like, no, let's go, you know, let's play some video games or go to the park or, you know, whatever, you know? Yeah. Well, I... Hey, about, you know, you're six now. It's time for you to try your first cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't had but... my first cigarette yet when I was six, but I had had my first cigarette. Oh, I mean, I guess, well, uncle. I guess, you know, I, both my parents smoked, so I, I guess in a way I had had my. Oh yeah. I, I had smoked first. cartons and cartons of secondhand smoke. But... Yeah. I mean, did your, did, did your family, whoever smoked in your family, I, I Everybody. clearly remember for the longest time, just yeah. ride in the car with them and like yeah. them not opening the, the windows. No, I mean, I used to get, like, know, it wasn't I even something the they thought about. <laughs> No, like I mean, I'd, I'd be in like the back seat. And my my dad is up there driving the car and smoking away, and you know I would ask him, "Can you please just open the window?" Like, and he would he would open the window like a half an inch. Yeah, you know, either it was hot out and he wanted the AC on, or it was cold out and he had the heater on. And uh, my grandfather was the same way. It's like they just did. It just like didn't compute. You know, like you're getting free secondhand <laughs> smoke and you're complaining about it. You know. Back in my day, we just said thank you. <laughs> Jason says, smoking is over. I can walk outside right now and see someone smoking within literally 46 seconds, which is uh, awfully specific. But uh, it really depends on where you live. Like here where I live in California, smoking is really not common. Yeah, I, well, here in Kentucky, like some, some, I mean, smoking in, in restaurants is still legal. Here. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but i mean some places obviously don't allow allow it anyways i mean yeah. i'm i'm a former smoker i smoked for same here you smoked i didn't know that yeah i mean i smoked until till i was 30 so i've been quit for oh that's about that's about the same years. as me actually i used to be a, i used to be a pack a day man yeah same here i mean and wait, i'll tell you in new york city like even back in uh 2007 Eight is uh i mean packs were like like ten dollars a pack <laughs> yeah i for, i forgot who i was just telling the other day like back in the good old days when i smoked i used to pay like every payday i would go down to this one store where i could buy a whole carton of uh uh camel cigarettes so name brand cigarettes and it was 18 dollars for the whole carton <laughs> And I would I would make that I would stretch that out so that it lasted until my next paycheck. So I guess I smoked <laughs> ten packs every fourteen days. But, what 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 did you smoke? Oh, I used to bounce around a lot. I would go through phases. Like I think I started off smoking like Marlboro Lights, uh, and then I switched to Marlboro smart. Reds, and then I switched over to Camels, like I just mentioned. Yeah. For a while, I smoked non-filtered cigarette <laughs> because I was going to community college, which where everybody smokes at community college, but nobody has any money. And so if you had a cigarette, somebody wanted to bum a cigarette. Like, this is what I tell my undergrads now. Like, drive a manual transmission, smoke non-filtered cigarettes, and develop a taste for black licorice. <laughs> no one will ever ask you for anything. Things, like, because, you know, when you smoke, hey, man, can I bum a smoke? Or, like, one of my cars is a truck. And so it's like, oh, man, can I borrow your truck? You can, but it's a manual. Oh, I don't know how to drive a manual. You know, oh, what is that? Some candy? Can I have some? You can, but it's black licorice. Oh, never mind. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah. I mean, I, well, I, I, my, my second car was a manual. Yeah. I, it, was, I it was excruciating. My, I mean, my, my dad taught me, and he had like no patience to teach me about it. Wow, look at those glove boxes that just went by. Did you see those? I used to have those in one of my old labs. <laughs> I see Paul Sutton is saying, uh, I miss smoking sometimes, even though it's, I quit 10 years ago. And it's true. No, I mean, that's like what some... you, you think you miss it, but like every once in a while, I'm like, oh man, I really want a cigarette. And anytime I've ever had a cigarette, like subsequent to, you know, way back when, it reminds me of like why I quit. Like, oh, this yeah. is disgusting. Well, and like I... when you haven't had any nicotine in your body in like years, it's 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 like you might as well have never smoked because it like makes you feel all weird again. So, um, like I miss it like in the habitual sense. Yeah, if that makes you know like I miss, like on a cold day 
you know, going outside on a cold day and having a cigarette sounds really good, but then then I'll do it, and then I'm like, oh, this is, you know, this is terrible. Well, I, I don't I don't mind like I sometimes I'll like walk behind somebody who is smoking. I was kind of like, oh, this is yeah. So, you know, hey, Smoke you, Monster you enjoy... wants you to know that he had a manual transmission DeLorean. Oh, that's that's that's, that's pretty badass. Like the only thing I say about uh, in in my personal life experience is that generally speaking, you find out like Smoke Monster apparently is the, is the exception here because normally you find out within five minutes of meeting somebody that they either have or used to have a DeLorean. <laughs> you know, it's like the old joke of how do you know someone's a vegan? You know, because they tell you or does CrossFit. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you can you can plug so many things in there. But like I used to work with a guy who had a DeLorean and like he would work it into every conversation. <laughs> well, I mean, I would want to tell everybody I had one, too. I mean, what you? Uh, I mean, I personally wouldn't, but I'm probably kind of. Weird. So I'm just letting the, the intro play because I love the intro to this, this game. Although, I mean, I the Sega CD one is one of the first games I can remember that it had just like really, really good voice acting. And even now it still holds up. That's true. Smoke Monster is also a vegan, but I only found out about that because we were staying at the same hotel and I was wondering why he was eating weird food. It's funny, like for a long time, Snatcher was a game that I really regretted not picking up when it was cheaper. Because mm -hmm. like at one point I could have gotten a really nice copy of Snatcher for like, and I mean, this is still a lot of money, don't get me wrong, but like I could have gotten a, a like a mint condition complete copy of it for like 300 bucks. Um, which, I mean, I think it's a lot more than that now, but, and like I was kicking myself for a long time. Oh, I should have bought that. I should have bought that, you know. And then I got... Well, let me finish and then you can, you can do that. But mm -hmm. I was going to say is like, you know, now that like I can just play Sega CD games on my Mr. Like I don't now I'm glad I didn't buy it. Uh, oh, OK, so you got a five dollar donation from Ashura, uh -huh. who Thank says you. that Nintendo is just super cautious about seizures because of the Pokemon incident from long ago. I didn't know. I don't know. I what remember the is. Pokemon incident, but I newer games have the different standards for roping. Do you do remember that or you don't? I, I remember hearing about it. So like, it was just it... cut out. So it just like skipped the whole oh, uh, exchange between Gillian and, and I mean, I don't know if this is considered like a better version or worse version. But I mean, there's a whole exchange that they that him and, and his ex-wife have before he leaves. So I wonder, I mean, I is there's people people in the chat will probably know if this is if this is considered okay Sega C is based on this with extra stuff okay so that makes sense yeah and just skip the Jamie I'm a junk I used to follow the guy on who is the voice of Gillian Seed on uh on Twitter and then what happened. Uh, I mean, I tweeted to him one time. I like asked him something about it, and yeah. he responded. And then he responded to the same tweet like five months later. And then <laughs> he said the same him? thing both times. Like this guy doesn't have his crap together. I'm not going to follow him anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I, you, I, just, you made a point of saying I used to follow this guy. So like at some point you made the conscious decision to like click over. To like people you follow on Twitter and then be like, nope. <laughs> no, I, I probably still follow him on my personal account. I just never check my personal account anymore. So you got a $5 donation from Daniel Alexander. Oh, who, thank you. Uh, I mean, I don't know if this is addressed to both of us. I don't know anything about this, so I'm going to defer to your expertise. 
Would you recommend the HydraScart switcher over the G-Scart? You know, someone just emailed me about this, and we we were able to test out a, a Hydra a long time ago. Um, and I remember having some certain issues, but I think that that stuff has all been fixed. I have no idea like how they are, how they're considered now. I know they he has versions that can you know you can connect two of them together, and it just like has like like sixteen inputs or something like that. Hmm. Uh, but I mean, we've used the GSCART since essentially since they were like first made available, and we're very happy happy with them. I have like a five port SCART switch that only has like three things plugged in. Uh, you got another five dollar donation from Thank Craig. Oh, that's Craig Juan or Craig Juan. Uh, it says thanks for doing the stream. Not only is it good to see the PC Engine Mini in action, but it's good to see both of you guys. It means a lot. Take care. Oh. Well, thanks, thanks. Uh, you know we're do what we can. I mean, it's a lot of people might not have a lot going on right now. So I mean, stuff like this is is always fun. I I feel like I want to do more daytime streams. I don't know. I did one like last week and it really didn't go well. So I'm not going to do that anymore. I didn't? Mm -mm. That's why I left it uh, unlisted. Like, you got to know when your wheelhouse is. You know, for me, like, this is like a good streaming time. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know. Like, a lot of times during the, the, the week, well, we, I guess we used to stream on Twitch, like, during the week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one of us would be like working on something, the other person would play something. Yeah. And like if I was like shooting B roll, I would just like feed, send my camera feed through. Yeah. So there's just like different stuff going on, and they're they're much so more people casual. So we're just and watching you shoot B roll. Yeah, and also like while well, like Try was playing something. Oh, all right. And then, then we just talk, you know. Yeah. I don't have a you know. I'm a one-man show over here, so. <laughs> hey, somebody is requesting, says, we need a Burger King Sneak King live stream. I mean, I kind of forgot all we, about we, those we, games. We... You remember those games, Corey? The ones that was the Xbox 360 games that you oh, could yeah, get? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, try stream uh, Sneak King oh, yeah. last year on April 1st, where he went through and tried to make the, the video signal from the Xbox as bad as he possibly could. Why? Well, it was, it was April 1st, it was, it was, you know, April Fool's Day, but it was also like how to, like how to get the, the worst video from your Xbox. Oh, all right. Yeah. And it was fun. I mean, he went through like several different devices. I mean, is there any way to get it down to like RF? Uh, yeah, I mean, he was able to like send through something that was making it RF and then he would run that through like a DVD recorder and go back up to like, com com like the component and then hmm. just like up and down. It was, it was pretty funny. I like my, there we go. Can I not die here? Oh, okay. I guess I can. I guess my hitbox is really small, so. Uh, but it was fun. I mean, if you if you go back through our live stream archives, you can see it though. And I guess the whole idea was that it was the video was video quality was so bad that it was making it extremely difficult for him to play, as well. That's pretty bad. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was looking at the chat. Okay, I guess this makes sense. It's the same company as Wings of War. Oh, someone's saying I should play, I guess, on a live stream, old demos that come in the magazines. That would be cool. That right? would be a lot of fun. I do have a lot of demo demos. Like official PlayStation Magazine demos? Yeah. Well, I don't, I'm not sure if I have any of those anymore, but I have a lot of demo. Like, I mean, I have, like, a lot of the demo discs that would have come uh, in the, like, in the box with the PlayStation or, like, demo discs that, you know, maybe you'd go to, like, Babbage's or something and the clerk would give you a you know, give you a disc. Did was was Babbage's your preferred store? I mean, what was what was your oh, I local I mean, store that you would well, go to? Well, where I where I grew up, we didn't have a lot of choice. So, 
So um, what was it? Was it Babbage's? You know, I, I honestly don't know. It, The store I remember being in the mall when I had my PlayStation was a software, etc. Okay, I, I mean... So, and I think at some point it may have been something else, but that was kind of like the only corporate video game store we had at that time. Like sometime in like 97 or 98, we got a Funko Land, but mm -hmm. uh, other than that, we just had like mom and pop shops. But we did have like one of the stores that we had was like one of the video game stores that like always advertised in the back of like Game Pro and EGM. Right. Uh, so it was a pretty big, even though it was a locally owned store, it was a, it was a pretty big store and they had a lot of stuff. So, um, but other than that, like I had to buy games at, you know, Toys R Us. Like we didn't even get like, like I didn't realize that Best Buy was around in like the 16 bit era because exactly. like we didn't get a Best Buy until like 98 or something. Yeah. I had no idea they were around that. And I'd never heard of it. I'm like, Oh, what's Best Buy? This place is cool. Yeah, I mean, there was a, a, a Babbage's, or it was either Babbage's or Software, etc. Were they the same company? Like, were they owned by the same company? Uh, I honestly don't know, but that would kind of make sense, because I feel like the store that I went to in the mall was something else before it was a software, etc. So it would... Uh... And for some reason, I want to say that it was a Babbage's, but I don't know why I think that. And then somebody in the chat's bringing up CompUSA, and that's like the same thing. Like, right. Basically, in like 97 or 98, they built this huge shopping center where I grew up. And that's when, like, that's where the CompUSA went, and that's where the Best Buy went. And, and that's like the first that I knew that those were even like things that existed. And then somebody else says, Do you remember Circuit City? And that we did have. We had a Circuit City and a Good Guys for as long as I could remember. And that's actually where I got my Genesis was at Circuit City. And the first time I ever played an Atari Jaguar was at the Good Guy. I think the game... Which, if you don't know what Good Guys... I think I think the Good Guys was only a West Coast thing. And it was sort of like a slightly upscale version Two. of, like, Circuit City. One. Zero. Yeah, there was there was a Babbage's in Buffalo, and but I mean, I just had electronics boutique. And as someone said, it went it, it went the crap when it changed the EB games. And I do agree with you. I, I worked at electronics boutique for a long time, and uh, I stopped working there when it switched switched the EB games. Hey, have you Back played? You haven't played Star Wars big box yet, right? PC games on the entire wall. Do you hear me? What did you say? I was requesting that you play Star Parodier if you have. Oh, okay. You can. That's it. Um, there it is. Jikushinsei. Yeah, we had a FI, too, or whatever you want to call it, FYE. That's supposed to stand for, like, for your entertainment or something. Well, we got one yeah. of those, but that was later as well. But I, I feel like FYE used to be, like, Camelot music. Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't have that. I mean, do, do you, does the name Camelot music sound familiar, though? It sounds familiar, but maybe just from hearing people talk about it. And before it was called Camelot music, I feel... And I'm not sure if this is true for everywhere, but... The Camelot music that we had was called The Wall. The Wall? Yep, right. it was. It was The Wall before FYE. Where, okay. So maybe it was Camelot to The Wall and then FYE. Yeah. Somebody else was mentioning the warehouse. We had... There was a warehouse, like, not... So I was pretty spoiled, actually, just out of luck. Like, not far from my house at all was uh, a warehouse, and then across the street from that was a Tower Record. And we used to go in there all the time. I remember going in there and buying like cassette tapes uh, when I was a kid. And then later the tower moved, but only like a half a block away. And then it got way bigger. And then I used to actually shop uh, here in Sacramento is where Tower Records started. And I used to go shop at the original uh, Tower Records location. 
Although I don't think I knew at the time that it was the original location. But uh, that like that area is still named after like there's a tower theater across the street uh, from where the tower records was. So is it check it was was it was it Camelot music before it was the wall? I, I feel like it, so it was Camelot well, music. I thought that's what somebody just said. It I want to make sure that it was because. I remember buying the uh, the audio cassette to uh, Transformers the movie at Camelot Music. Wow. Did that have the Weird Al Yankovic song on it? Yeah, Dare to be Stupid. Yeah, that's his best song, by the way. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd probably agree with that. I mean, I'm, I mean, I like Weird Al quite a bit, but I mean, I, to me at least, clearly, that uh, that was the best song he did. Oh, you got a five dollar five dollars Canadian uh, donation from Dennis Servant. I don't want to say your name wrong. Uh, he doesn't have anything to say. But well, thank you, Dennis. Peel Joffa Canadian flag. <laughs> I mean, when I lived in Buffalo, I used to go to Canada a lot because uh, yeah, because his drinking age was nineteen. That's a weird. I guess just for us, because everything here is either 18 or 21. So, yeah, 19 seems like a weird age. It's all relative. I guess. Yeah. So you'd sneak across the border and have some uh, Labatt or Moosehead or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. Labatt Blue. Yeah. Which is, that is definitely something I've not had in a long time. I don't, I mean, I don't think you can even get that around here, but I mean, I'm pretty far from Canada. Yeah. I feel like I don't see a lot of Canadian beer for sale here. For sale. Like, I remember I got all excited the other day. Well, not the other day. It was a few months ago, but I went into a grocery outlet. I don't know if you guys have a grocery outlet there, but you know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like the thrift store of food mm -hmm. and you know, it's a discount food place, you know? Uh, and I went in there, and they had they had Moosehead, and I, mean, I got all excited, like, oh, I haven't seen Moosehead forever. <laughs> I, I think I ended up buying some just because it had been so long since I'd even seen it for sale. I feel like that boss was really easy. I just didn't much have a reason to change my gun. What do you what do you think? Have you played this game before? I or? haven't. That's good no. music. But see, you're playing your your little PC engine. Yeah, that's why I chose them. So is then I was thinking about this today. Like, is the name is like, is it supposed to be like parody? Because you have this game and you have Parodius Da, and both of them are like kind of very silly games. So is that? Is that name supposed to be like making reference to the fact that it's like kind of a parody game? Oh, I definitely, definitely. I think that that makes sense. Yeah, somebody says yes. Parodius equals parody. So is there? I mean, I always thought that like this was supposed to be a parody. Parodius of, 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 I, think a, I think Parodius dies a is a parody of. Gradius. It seems like it's more of a parody of. But I thought this was maybe supposed to be like a parody of like Twin B or something like that. Would that? Maybe I don't know. I was thinking more like the Soldier series, but oh really yeah, don't... Star Parody. That would make sense. Yeah. Oh, parody. Yes, parody. Like even Soldier. this weapon kind of reminds me of one of the weapons in Superstar Soldier. Yeah. Oh, parody Soldier. There you go. Yeah. For Star Soldier. Well, there you go. See. Yeah. That's the nice thing about live streaming. When you don't know something, you just ask the chat. Yeah. We, knows. we crowdsource the answer. Yeah. And usually... <laughs> and usually everyone ends up knowing more than, <laughs> than I do a lot of times. Well, I don't know that much. I just speak authoritatively, and so people think I know. <laughs>
it's funny because I think I feel like I'm constantly making comments about how I'm stupid, but people don't believe it because I sound like you know, I sound like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> your your hand eye coordination by the way is being uh, uh, praised in the chat. I I see that. Like it's no, it's interesting cuz I I know I've talked about this a lot about how I I used to think that I was better at games when I was younger. But yeah. I definitely think I'm better now. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. Like I, 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 I I have to admit I've been getting though. a little bit nervous about about my hands and just in general lately. What do you mean? Uh, I have this, I have this thing called Raynaud sy syndrome, where it, like right. my hands and feet get really, really cold. Uh huh. Because uh, like it doesn't get enough like it has something to do with like the uh, like the capillaries or whatever in your hands and like doesn't get enough uh, like circulation to them. Yeah. And it feels like my hands like like they hurt so much. They, they get hurt cold? so much easier. Oh, like hurt from being cold. Like if you go outside, well, without not even just on, being cold, but it just you know, like I was. If they're cold and they get hurt, it feels like it's like it's, it's very. It's like it gets really painful. Uh, we were just building this uh, playset for the kids, and it was it's just like it was really cold out, and it was just like a lot of like putting screws in and you know putting yeah. nails into this big playset and i just felt like my hands like i was just doing like permanent damage to them well i just would have guessed like that you would use that as sort of like your reason for not doing things like that you know well i mean like, sometimes i do when your wife is like oh Corey, we got to put this thing together and you're like well, oh I my mean... god you... i would love to but i got this friggin raynaud syndrome no, it's, going. It's, it's definitely oh. a, a a conversation when stuff like that happens i mean I, I have to go in and warm them up. I mean, my feet seem to be a little bit better than last year. I mean, in the old house, there was, like, not very good heating. Uh, so, I mean, my feet, my toes would get so uh, so cold out. Like, my big toes would just go numb. And I'd have to yeah. put them, run them under hot water. And they would turn blue. Oh, wow. Hey, somebody in the chat's got a good pro tip for you. Uh, I don't know if you knew this or not, but uh, if you use a uh, screwdriver when you're, you know, screwing in screws, it's a lot easier on your hand <laughs> than just doing it with your bare fingers. I, I'd heard I'd heard people talk about that before, but I, yeah. I mean, it just seems like so inconvenient. Well, because then you got to go find it. Like I don't even know where my <laughs> yeah, screwdriver. Yeah, exactly. Is. You know, probably my wife was using it to dig a hole in the backyard. <laughs> I don't even know where it is. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's fine during the summer, but during the winter, it just is obnoxious. Well, it's got to kind of suck too, right? Because if your feet are cold, you can always put on some wool socks and some shoes. But exactly, exactly. Like I, some, like I have wool socks that I put on. Sometimes I like even have to double layer them. But with hands, you can't really do a lot. Yeah. Well, you could, I mean, you could get like some fingerless uh, gloves and then shove like a hand warmer inside of it, right? Yeah, but Maybe I mean, that. a lot of times it's just the fingers themselves that are the problem. Sure, sure. But I mean, even like when I come to bed, like if I, 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 I cannot, I hate sleeping with socks on. Yeah, who doesn't? <laughs> but I mean, on. I get in, in bed and like my, my cold feet touched my wife she was just like why what is what's come on like just like immediately wakes up and gets angry angry about it wait you you do it when she's sleeping well i like not cool like if i'm cold <laughs> i'll get in the bed and if you know my wife is a well, woman, even if they I'm like not, like graze her not when she's sleeping you know? You should get a. I have a heated bed pad. Do you have one of those? A heated bed pad? No. You know, like I mean, you know, like an electric blanket, right? I mean, you know what an electric blanket? Yeah, yeah. Is. So this, instead of being on top of you, like you know, when you're making the bed, and like there's that thing that you put like over the mattress before you put the sheet on there. It's like a bed pad. I don't know what that's even for, really. But 
um you can buy one of those that's like that's the electric blanket instead so it's like underneath you well, I, I, I like it like i've got one that i got at costco and it's got like 25 setting <laughs> so, so drink enough screwdrivers you won't notice the cold that's that's probably true i guess that's true i, mean, I don't really know you know, I don't really drink screwdrivers, and I don't know why, because they're delicious. Uh, I mean, they're okay. It's not like something I would just I mean, drink. purely for the caloric intake, I should find something to drink besides beer, and it's not like I don't have enough food. Yeah. How do you feel about Bloody Marys? Uh, okay, so I've only ever had one Bloody Mary in my life. And it was at like 6.30 in the morning, and it was on a train. So <laughs> what I'm saying is I don't think I've really uh, amassed the experience needed to uh, even have an educated opinion uh, on Bloody Mary. Well, they're pretty, I, I like them a lot. I mean, as long as they're, they're made. This they, seems like a lot of work. Yeah, but I mean... I just I like that. That's what I like about just beer, you know, or just bourbon. Like, just yeah. open the bottle and go. But Bloody Marys are, like, made to be, like, drank in the morning. Same thing, like, with mimosas, I guess. But, I mean, you can drink anything you want in the morning. It just depends on the setting, you know? Like, yeah. You can you can drink a, a beer at 7 o'clock in the morning if you're, like, at a flea market. <laughs> that's, that's true. Like I don't, I don't understand like why we as a society had to invent these like special drinks so that you could like drink in the morning without feeling like a functional alcoholic. You know, like, yeah. like if I crack open a beer at like nine o'clock in the morning, there's like something wrong with me. But I can have a Bloody Mary or a mimosa or an Irish coffee, and that's like totally fun. Like, what's the diff? <laughs> I see uh, HBA on YTB is saying I drink a Michelada or Michelada, or however you would say it. I think I. Oh, Wait, I, is that the one with good. the Clamato in it, or is that just the one that has, like, the spices in it? The what? It's well, a, okay. the spices so, along with, like, a uh, like a Tecate or something like that. Okay, but that's not the one that has Clamato. Uh, is no. that right? Okay, then... Because uh, I've had that, and uh, I didn't like that at all. Like, the, the Bud Light with Clamato in it was gross, but... Uh, I don't know if they have this where you are, but like here, if you go to like the liquor store or a gas station or something, they sell these. Uh, it's like a styrofoam cup. You know, it, it kind of looks like a like a uh, instant lunch cup, you know, like the, the cup of noodles. Right. Like where it has the, the paper top that you rip off, but it's like way bigger because it's like 32 ounces. Because the idea is you buy one of these and it already has like this the seasoning or the spices in it. So you buy that and then you buy a 32 ounce beer and then you rip the top off of this cup and you just pour your beer in it. Good to go. So I've never tried one of those. I want to try one of those. Because uh, like I said, I had the Bud Light with Clamato and I finished it because like, you know, you don't you don't throw away beer, but um, it was it was not an enjoyable experience for me. <laughs> it was like a thing where my friend and I each bought one. And it was sort of like just you know see if we could like what's that show that used to be on TV with Joe Rogan where you had to like lie down in a bed of cockroaches? Oh, fear, oh, um, fear Factor. Fear Factor. Yeah, that was that was like our own personal Fear Factor. <laughs> was uh, was drinking Bud Light with Clamato. I, I could never watch that show. No, I didn't used to watch it either for the same reason. Like, I, I don't know how much money somebody would have to pay me before, like, I would lay down in, like, a bed of cockroach. I feel like I'm doing pretty good at this. Oh, definitely. Have you even died yet? No. This is like Soldier Blade, maybe, where the game starts off pretty easy, and then you get into, like, level three or four, and then it starts hammering. Yeah. Yeah, somebody says that it's super easy until the final level. <laughs> I just, 
they want to make it so that you are overconfident. Yeah. Yeah, Johnny's agreeing. He says the game is really easy. It's pretty good music, though. I like, I like that aspect of it. Did did was Joe Rogan one? Of, didn't he end up hosting the Man Show for a while? Did you used to uh, watch the Man Show. Because remember, it was Adam Carolla yeah. and Jimmy Kimmel, but then they left, and then it was uh, like two other guys. Doug Stan. Yeah, it was Joe Rogan and Doug Stanhope. Uh, I mean, I didn't, I didn't see it. I mean, I just remember the Adam Carolla. You may and know Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, Doug Stanhope from. Such phrases as "Who the heck is Doug Stanhope?" Yeah, who is that? Aside, I mean, he's a stand-up comic. Okay. But yeah, aside from that, I couldn't say something else that he had done. But that doesn't—that's not a reflection on Doug Stanhope. It's a reflection on the fact that I don't really keep track of pop culture. <laughs> And now, of course, somebody in the chat has to say, Doug Stanhope is my favorite comedian. So. <laughs> I mean, it's... I remember when that was on, and I never thought that Jimmy Kimmel would be... Right? Like, be anything else. Because, you know, Adam Carolla was coming off of... Was it, was it Love Line he was doing? What? Yeah. What's Adam Carolla do? Doesn't Adam Carolla have a... He has, like, a successful podcast now, right? Is he still doing that? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I know that's what Joe Rogan is doing, but I thought that was what Adam Carolla was doing, too. But You definitely wouldn't think that somebody who had been part of the Man Show, which was very politically incorrect, would end up uh, with a major, you know, network late-night show. But, but that's good. I'm not saying that like it's a bad thing. I mean... I mean, I like Jimmy Kimmel a lot. I mean, I, I, I haven't watched, like, any late night shows in so long. But I did tune in I, uh, I recently because it's so interesting seeing them do it, like, having these shows now, and they can't have any studio audience. Oh, so uh, I guess like, that's, I hadn't even But they're still about. making the show. Wow, that'd be weird. Yeah, so it's just completely quiet all the time. Well, that makes me kind of want to watch one to check it. I hadn't even thought about that, but um, and then HBA on YTB is saying, "Do you do y'all watch SNL?" And uh, I don't really watch it too much currently, but then it makes me think the same thing. Like they're going to have to have Saturday Night Live with no studio audience. Yeah, I'm sure they just aren't doing it. In period. But it's. I would kind of hope not, because it's uh, that's more than ten people in the same space. I see. I, I see Smoke Monster saying he watches Conan, but didn't Conan like switch over to like a, it's like one show a week now? I don't know. I haven't watched. I had like multiple editor friends in New York that went on to like work on that show. Oh, that'd be cool. I mean, I like Conan O'Brien. He's very funny. I just I don't watch most. Really. Somebody mentions Craig Ferguson. Like that was a good late night. I don't know what happened oh so guy. conan's only it's only 30 minutes i mean do you feel like it's lost a lot of its charm now that it's that's what it's what it's like i mean i don't know maybe I mean, i'd have to watch it for for I me mean, i know you're not asking me you're asking smoke um i'd have to watch it to see like you know because sometimes some of those shows are pretty long i mean i remember didn't like back in the earlier days uh of the tonight show with johnny carson it was like a 90 minute show yeah. Which I'm saying that could be a bit much, you know. But, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. 30, but I mean, 30 minutes back then, there wasn't any other options. Right. Powder Keg says, do you think the analog pocket will get delayed? I, I'm sure it already has been. But I mean, they never had a release date in the first place. So, I mean, they could just, just waiting it out. Bagga Schmidt says, people always say SNL used to be funnier, but I don't think it was ever funny. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, man, I, I that show really goes up and down. Yeah. You know, but I mean, you look I, at like started, the mid 90s, especially like, I mean, I like anything with Chris Farley. Was like oh, amazing. yeah. 
Like to me, early early in the mid nineties, you know, when you had like Dana Carvey and Kevin. Yeah, Neal. I mean, speaking well, of Johnny Carson, I always loved Dana Carvey doing Johnny Carson, and uh, Phil Hartman was Ed McMahon, and we used we used to always yeah. do that. We used to always go, "Yes, yes. you are yeah. correct, sir." Yeah, that was that was very good. <laughs> well, speaking of Johnny Carson, man, I used to love watching that. That was like the good thing about being up late, you know, because you were sick or something. You know, is that like my parents would let me put on Johnny Carson? <laughs> oh, yeah. somebody, somebody here says Craig Ferguson is my small town's biggest star. That's pretty cool. That's cool. Someone here from he's he's Scottish, right? I think so. I should have done force field. Oh, I'm not going to get to hear the music. Destroy them all. You'll have to describe it. So did you have a choice between having the the improved or whatever? Oh, I, uh, I should check that out, shouldn't I? Well, does it sound different or does it sound like the right music? I haven't tried it yet. What are you talking about? What are you playing on the screen? It's great. It's the first Gradius. I thought cool. I thought you said this had different music. No, no, the the oh, the, the first Gradius, system. the 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 Hugh Cart of the first Gradius. Oh, you're playing Gradius too. Sorry. Yeah. Um. Oh, so just real quick. Sorry, Morpheus had a question for me in the chat. He said, "Did you ever watch the Arsenio Hall show?" Yes. Uh, I used to watch that show. That was probably when I was in like sixth, seventh grade, something like that. Like I had a little black and white TV. Uh, in my room. For those of you youngins out there, yes, TVs used to not be in color. <laughs> uh, I had like a little 12 or 13 inch black and white TV uh, on top of my dresser in my room when I was that age. That I mean, that TV must have been from like the late 60s or early 70s. But um, but yeah, when Arsenio Hall um, got popular, it, it was I mean, it was a very popular show with young people for sure. And I used to love watching that show. Like I would stay up late because i would have it on in my room and like my mom didn't you know she's she wasn't going to come in there and be like oh i hear your tv's on like she i think my mom's attitude was just you're the one that's going to be tired at school tomorrow <laughs> so um and i would just keep it down low but yeah i used to love watching the arsenio hall show i still think that's crazy that that show got canceled Uh, and some mentions in living color. Yeah, I, I started watching in living color with the first episode because I remember Fox was like hyping the crap out of that show. And uh, was in living color on Sunday night. Do you remember Corey? I feel like that yes. show was on like Sunday night on Fox. I can't I mean, tell you if this is the improved soundtrack or not. Sorry, sorry. But I remember like you know we would. We would all be like quoting the the show like to each other at school and in living color. Oh yeah, like doing like fire mark, oh, yeah. fire mark I mean... bill or whatever, and like uh, homie the clown. Like I remember, I even had a homie the clown shirt that, I used <laughs> that had like homie on it and said like homie don't play that or yeah. What's Damon Wayans doing now? I don't know. I mean, he was yeah, so producing funny. like. I'm... Like I mean, you know, obviously I remember watching my Living Color and then like that movie, The Last Boy Scout. Yeah. He had a sitcom for a while too, I think. That was more recently, I think. But like just in general, like the Wayans family is like, well, where, where are those guys all of a sudden? You know, well, guys and no, they made too many. Just because that they were such a movies. talented family, like where did they go? All right, busy hanging out with. Uh... Rob Schneider, probably. Oh, somebody says you have to hold down select while choosing Gradius to play the new oh, okay. near arcade. Oh, so the music is just more, it's like closer to the arcade original? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I just heard they redid it to, I mean, it was just well, obviously if, they just a passion if it's like arranged music or whatever, then I don't like that. But if they did it to make it closer to the arcade than I guess because it sounds like you get both versions so right then, then, like if you only had the quote unquote new and improved version I kind of wouldn't care for that if you can choose oh, so I'm saying, cool. 
better art. Let me, I guess I'll try it. So I gotta hold down select and start. I mean, that, that's what the guy says. See what happens. Oh yeah, it's definitely different. I wonder if you need to... It almost sounded better the other way. I wonder if you needed to hold it down to have the original. Like, do you, you think now maybe it sounds more like the... Like, like yes. the PC I mean, engine it, game? It sounds, it sounds like what probably the original sounded like. You know what? I was talking to my wife about this a little while ago, because she, we were on, like unpacking some of this stuff from like from her childhood, and she has this like, like this, I don't know, like it's like a riser for a monitor, and it had 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 Tweety Bird on it. I remember okay. just like how <laughs> popular like the Looney Tunes were, and how oh, yeah. it, was, it was. But. I think it's, I still get a kick out of it when I see like, like some older adults just like wearing Looney Tunes shirts with like maybe like a Tweety Bird coming out of like the, of the like of the the chest pocket. Uh huh. I don't I don't know if you ever see that anymore, but I remember. Because you think it's weird that like adults are into cartoons, or I don't... no, <laughs> just the just the prevalence of like Looney Tunes specifically, and like. Well, I mean, it's some. But the thing, I mean, how many generations of kids grew up with Looney Tunes, you know? Like, you know, we used to watch Saturday, we, you know, it was the Bugs Bunny and Tweety show on Saturday mornings, right? But that was still, they were still showing you the cartoons from, like, 40s and 50s, you know? Yeah. So, that, like, you know, three generations probably of kids grew up watching that. It's kind of sad that it's gone, but, I mean, not gone, but I'm saying I don't, you know, I don't know where you go to watch that stuff now, you know. Or so, so much of that stuff is probably considered now, like, not okay to show your kids, you know. <laughs> oh, I always hated this part. Oh, like random. Oh, uh, because you're doing it. You're, you're playing this game all wrong. Are you supposed to just get up here or something? I'm really glad that I'm watching the chat instead of you because I'd be getting aggro. Well, first of all, you're far enough into this thing that you should have like three options right. I know. And then I died. Should, yeah. Okay. You should be all the way down in the lower left, where the Vic Viper is like lined up with the top of the volcanoes, and you have like a cascade of options above you, and then you're just hammering the fire button so that like nothing can touch you. Well, you know, greatest games like, have always been. Like, don't die, first of all, because that's part of what's screwing you. Well, like exactly. That, I mean, that's part the thing of your strategy. About games a bad that, strategy. Why I always felt that they were so hard is because if you die, yeah, it, well, like later on in the game, it's like you're done. You got to start over. Like this, I'm not like I'm not like a, a Gradius expert. You know, I'm like a coach. You know, like I can teach you how to be good at it, even though I'm not <laughs> actually good at it. Like. Like, you have to not die when you play this game, which means you have to play it, like, more defensively instead of feeling like you have to kill, like, every little thing. Yeah. Kind of like Archive. But were you able to beat this? I mean, I know you said that you had never been able to beat it, and then randomly you started playing it, and you were able to get to, like, the last level. Or was that the second one you are talking about? No, no, that was this one. I got to the last level and didn't even realize I was on the last level. <laughs> Because I'd never seen it before, so like I didn't. It doesn't tell you like, oh, this was the last level. And then you realize it was the last level, and you died immediately. Yeah. <laughs> Stage fright or something, you know. But I mean, this is one of those games where like it's hard, but if you just if you practice and memorize the game. Yeah, exactly. You know. I mean, I was able to beat Gradius Five after playing it a ton, and. You know, you play it so much that I, I mean, that's how shooters are meant to be played. You play it so much and then you, you eventually just have it memorized. You can get to the end of the game basically without dying. Yeah.
Um, I feel like I haven't even scratched the surface of games to play on this. I might be spending too much time with certain games. So hopefully people don't mind. <laughs> I, don't know, you, I mean, how many different games have you played? Quite a few. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't play all of them, you know? I would just... I mean, I would just ask, like, if anybody in the chat, like, is there a game that you were hoping to see? Yeah, exactly. Is it, if, if anybody wants me to play specific games, let me know. I mean, I don't think anybody specifically requested that you play Gradius so poorly, but... <laughs> yeah, okay, I see Ghouls and Ghosts is next. So. Oh, yeah, thank you. Definitely you. play Ease really 1 and 2. Better. People want to see Ease, too. I don't know if maybe after that you just load up. Yeah, I'll do Ghosts and Ghosts and then Ease, because... Ease is, might be, like, my favorite game on here. I heard they redid the music in Fantasy Zone, also. Hmm. Uh, there it is. I'm not a fan of this redoing the music. Well, as long as you have the original version. Oh. This version is so hard. I don't know if Joe's still here. I, I wonder if he's finished this version. Hmm. Joe has the arcade board, I think, doesn't he? Yeah. That makes me a little bit jealous. But the, you know, this only has three, <clears throat> oh, three continues guess. in this version, so. We're getting, we're getting some CPS uh, cores coming out now. Oh yeah, I know. I mean, I'm supporting uh, uh, Yotego oh, on, on uh, Patreon. Yeah, I'm I, I'm not. I don't think I knew about him, and then I watched. Uh, I don't know if it was Smoke Monsters last stream, but the, the stream where he was talking about the CPS games. So I need to I need to add that guy to my Patreon list of people that I Patreonize. <laughs> I don't think that this version is nearly as good as the. Genesis version. I remember really? well, they were exactly. a lot of magazines were saying, "Oh, this is going to be this going to be better than the Genesis version." It's definitely not. I mean, the sound is much worse. It does not look as good. I, don't know. I mean, the Genesis version is my favorite version, but yeah, same here. I mean, Genesis version is. I mean, I've said this before on the stream, but Gen the Genesis version is probably my favorite Genesis game. Really? Wow. Yeah. I mean, do you think you'd have an easier time picking your top five Genesis games than, or top ten Genesis well, games than, than Super Nintendo? Oh yeah. You, well, I I think I just feel like I'm I'm a lot more educated when it comes to the Genesis library. So I just feel like like I can easily come up with a list of like top ten Super Nintendo games. But if I did that and said this is my top ten Super Nintendo games, like people would have issue with it because I would be leaving out a lot of good games just because I don't have experience. Right. But, um, but the whole premise of what I was talking about earlier, actually, if anybody cares, is that um, it was actually something, it was a few years ago now, but it was actually something that Bithead said in his show where he was talking about people's top 10 list and saying how they really weren't they really weren't that interesting because they were all so similar, right? Because, like, if you say, okay, this is my top 20 Super Nintendo games, for instance, there's going to be so many games that are just sort of, like, obligatory inclusions on that list, right? Like, you can't not say that, you know, game X, Y, and Z are, are top 10 or top 20 Super Nintendo games. And so, like, he was saying it would be a lot more interesting like to see like okay take your take the top 10 and just don't worry about that like what what are what's the next 10 games after that right and because then you're kind of you, you you're no longer being held down by like oh i have to talk about these obligatory games even if maybe i'm not that into them because maybe i didn't have that game when i was a kid or whatever and so that kind of gave me this idea of like well what if we just made that a thing and just said okay like I'm going to put together a list of like, you know, 
the top five or ten percent of the games on some system you know according to like you know making like an aggregate list based on other people's personal lists and then say okay well what are my favorite games after we take all of those out of consideration interesting yeah so like what i'm working on i'm working on this video right now for just for the side channel because it's not really a main channel caliber video but like i took like the top 10 uh turbo graphics 16 games uh because that was actually something that they did on the pc engine fx forum a long time ago was they had like you know anybody that wanted to could submit their top 10 or top 20 list of turbo graphics 16 uh hue card game and um and they used that to make like okay this is like the forum's collective top 20 list and so I just said, okay, I'm going to take those top 10 games and say, okay, that's the top 10, fine. What what would my next 10 games be? Because then you're kind of free to talk about the games that you really think are cool because right. you don't feel like you have to include, you know, Bonk 2 or you don't have to include Air, Air Zonk or Military Madness if they're not personal favorites of yours. Yeah, I mean, I don't... I don't know if it's just me, but I, like I, a lot of times I don't think about like, oh, I got to talk about those games. Like I, like I, I mean, I don't, I have no idea who, if there's very many people out there that would rank Ghouls and Ghosts as, as their favorite Genesis game. Right. But that, that's why I'm saying, like, if you just, if you just say, okay, fine, like, uh, Thunder Force Three and and Sonic the Hedgehog Two and Gunstar Heroes and whatever else, like, fine, that's the top five or the top ten Genesis games. Like, okay. And then you're gonna say, okay, well, here's my, here's like the next, my next favorite games, uh, you know, after those, because yeah, I'm sure if you made like an aggregate top ten list of Genesis games, like I doubt that Ghouls and Ghosts would end up on. Them. I love this game. Did you get my message the other day when I was saying that Bithead did another thing where he talked about, the, you know, he made another definitive list? Uh, what was it for? Was It was his, his it was vertically PC scrolling shooters, shooters, right? It was the top PC engine. But he, he gave, like, the exact same speech about, like, you know. People say, like, oh, it's just your opinion. No, this is yeah, the but definitive he even, list. He even did, well, no, but he even did the exact same imitation of, like, you know, like, well, this is my top 10 list and your top 10 list might be different. But he's like, no, this is the definitive list. <laughs> Although it's funny because when it comes to something like PC Engine shooters, like I would trust his opinion about the top 10 more than I would trust a lot yeah. of people's. You know what I mean? Say what you want about the guy, but the guy, I mean, his knowledge of PC Engine shooters is second to none. It was a long time before I played this version. I remember being so jealous of it, seeing pictures of it in magazines. Like, when did you finally get to play it? I, th I don't think I played through this version until the the virtual console on Wii. Like, what? Like, what is your Turbo Graphic sixteen history? Like, when did you first start playing like any Turbo Graphic sixteen? Once a country so peaceful and proud. Like, did you ever have one? No, no. I mean, I remember specifically going to Hills, a country where and it was like Turbo Graphics and Genesis next to each other, and I just played Altered Beast instead of Keith Courage, and I got Genesis for Christmas. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it was a while before I really put a lot of time into it. Mm. I mean, I I mean, I think that that's true for a lot of people i think that a lot of people will say like oh you're not you know it makes you like a like a poser if you didn't play it back in the day but whatever you know how could such a land of promise i mean i'm just honest about it you know like that's not something i played back then you know that's why we have we have bithead or we have johnny like right carrying the torch for those systems is like somebody that and now actually had it back in the day then when this music kicks in right here. So good. 
now the adventure unfolds. But I mean, I played Ease on the Master System when when that came out. Mm hmm. And it never really clicked with me at the, at the time that it was a cliffhanger ending. Yeah. Did you, I mean, you beat it when you were a kid? Yes. The the first one? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I... Oh, man. Uh, I try to read the chat as much as we can. I see someone saying, like, why would I feel feel that way? Um, like, it's a, like a, it's a stupid, stupid sentiment to feel that way. But I mean, I was, I was born in 1978, so I was that was. Yeah, I, you're I, just a damn kid. Yeah, I mean, I always thought it was so interesting that this game has a password feature as well. Why is that? I don't know because you can. You have the internal memory with the with the CD system, right? So what do you need a password for? Funny how to me it just sounds like deadly quiet because I can't hear the game. <laughs> Sorry, I, oh, I thought maybe you'd hear it. We have, we have like an awkward but... silence, but not really. You know? But it, it's funny because I grew up since I played the Master System version and didn't play this version for a long time. You know, I always thought it was, I thought it was Aaron the whole, all the time until at all, eight all, however you want to say it. But yeah, I mean, I played the. Master System version first, and I really liked it. I got stuck for a really long time in the mirror room mm -hmm. in the tower, which is very close to the end. So Matt Johnson's asking in the chat. Um, I mean, I know my answer to this. I'm curious to, to know your answer. Uh, out of the Turbo Graphics 16 launch lineup, uh, I'm curious uh, what. I'm curious to what your thoughts are on what should have been the pack-in game instead of Keith Curry. Um, it probably represents the system better. It would probably be Blazing Lasers. I don't know if that was like a, if that was a launch game or not. Yeah. yeah. Either that or Legendary Axe. But then again, you know, they probably wanted those, you know, to be the games that people buy, like along with the system. And I don't think that the Keith Courage is a bad game. I played through it on stream like two or three years ago and really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I I have no idea how they would have done it differently. I mean, Blazing Lasers probably would have been the smart choice. Yeah. But I, I don't know if that would have any more appeal than Keith Courage. To general general audiences. Oh, so Jordan Davis is saying that Plays and Lasers was the pack in for the PAL version. I mean, I have plenty of thoughts on how I think that the marketing for the Turbo Graphics should have been handled different, but I don't know if ultimately it would have made it different. I see. Uh, uh, I am Sia saying Bonk, but Bonk didn't come out until like a year after the system. Yeah. Uh, you realize the shimmering is real bad. You see it on the roof there. Wow, yeah, that's bad. Should have to buy a have I shield. Oh, you me. Uh so somebody's I mean I don't know if you know, well I guess maybe we'll say this till we somebody in the chat's asking how's the mini so far and is it worth it? But maybe that's more of a 
something to talk about when we're wrapping up the stream? Uh, I mean, I, I, I feel like if somebody wants it, they already know if they're going to buy it or not. Cause yeah. the, I think like, you know, the system has its fans and people that want it are being like, okay, it's, this is worth it to have. But I, I don't know. Like, I, I think if you like buying mini systems, then I think it's, it's worth it. I mean, I just think it's cool that it exists. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, the people that want it, basically, the, the people that are going to buy it already know that they want it. I mean, that, I don't know. I mean, is that's that, kind of true like and a... it's kind of not true. I mean, I, I still get people asking me every once in a while, but I think it's worth buying like Sega Genesis Mini here. Oh, that's true. Let's see, there's a donation there from Ben Brody. They, oh, they, I like with this a kind million of dollar question. Yeah. Well, well, I can read it so you can concentrate there. Uh, you can okay. You can have fifty million dollars, but anytime you sneeze, you have to sing the entire Donkey Kong rap, no matter where you are or what you're doing. Sonic City Escape is also allowed. Like I, I'd I mean, sing City yeah, Escape before but... I sing the DK rap. What's that? I would I would sing the Escape from the City before I sang uh, the DK rap. I mean, I just never. I don't really know the DK rap, so I don't I mean I don't I don't know it either, honestly. But I would just say like, um, I would have no problem doing that because if you gave me fifty million dollars, I would stay home. Like, <laughs> and I mean that very sincerely. Like I, you know, yeah, I said this the other day. Like I don't want to make light of this pandemic situation that we're in, but I will say that, uh, you know, I love not going anywhere. So like for me, it's really not big deal and certainly if i if i had 50 million dollars so that i didn't have to work aside from making a trip to the store you know supermarket once or twice a week i would pretty much never go anywhere so i mean <laughs> i'll 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 sing whatever song you want me to every time i sneeze oh, it's 700 i thought i was getting gold pretty quick there Oh, that's like, I feel like this is like the worst looking game. It just like looks the worst scaled. Are you sure you're in the right mode or whatever? I mean, I can, I'll try a different one. But it just, like it just, that's exceptionally poor. I like that it has the different uh, CD card. Like it has the early, like the 2.0 version. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Mm. I mean, this looks, doesn't look any better. Hmm. I think that's worse, actually. Because now it's, yeah, it's isn't the aspect good. ratio not exactly right? It looks like it's, well, now it's wrong because, like, I thought it would be... I didn't know if this is a 256 wide game right. or not. Yeah. That definitely made it worse. I mean, it's kind of frustrating that you, you shouldn't even have that option, right? I mean, would it have been that difficult for them to just make that decision for you of, like... You know, this is the resolution of the game, so, like, if you pick 4-3, this is what it's going to be. Well, that's the thing. It's like, why? it should have correct scale size. Like, it should just, like, choose the correct scale size per game. That's what I'm telling you. Yeah. Because, like, so the like, average having, like, person four doesn't even know what that like, is. Applied to everything. It should just, like, automatically, it should just, it should not have, uh, like, like these sp screen sizes. It should just have, like, a, like, a 2X, 3X of, like, its original resolution. So that's what mm -hmm. it is. And so it's like an integer scale no matter what. Mm -hmm. And you can choose to make it wider from there if you wanted to. Yeah. 
So let's see if this is any better here. Yeah, I, I mean, Jeffo was saying, like, like, no offense, but uh, most the average Joe won't even care about the inaccuracies. And that's, that's totally true. But as, as I said earlier, I feel like... <laughs> Like a system like like the tur like a PC Engine Mini or Turbo Graphics 16 Mini, I mean, like that, like, like the hardcore are the ones that are going to buy it. I don't think that average Joe is going to have interest in the Turbo Graphics Mini. I agree. I mean, I always feel like the biggest strength of like the NES Mini and the Super Nintendo Mini was like attracting people who. You know, maybe either weren't gamers want anymore. Shot of nostalgia or for a certainly bit. weren't retro gamers who would just walk into a Target and see this thing sitting there and think, oh man, that, that brings back memories or whatever. It, and that's exactly what it was. Yeah. I mean, that's that's yeah. why but it works so well. This is not going to be that. I mean, this is an Amazon exclusive anyway, like we said earlier. But even if it wasn't, like, how many people are walking into a Target and being like, oh man, TurboGrafx 16, I remember that. And then actually buying one. Because what is this, like 90 bucks or something? I forgot. But. Yeah, it's like uh, maybe 100 This was like $110 uh, yeah. shipped from Japan. I mean, I don't even know. I don't know. I, I guess I'll keep my pre-order. Just, I mean, I don't know. Because now I feel like now I don't really want to stream with it anymore. Just <laughs> now I'm getting it like six months late or something. <laughs> like, that's the main thing I wanted it for was to, to do this. So, yeah. And now that we're doing it here, it's like, well, what do I need mine for anymore? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I I just like to have them. I think they they're cool looking, like cool like kind yeah. of collectors. Items I totally, you know? I totally get that. I just don't really have place to like display them or whatever. You know, like like I already have a shelf with all of the actual systems on it. You know, like I don't need a shelf with mini systems on it. Right. Like, Mine are all just stacked up in their boxes in the closet. <laughs> so that's why, like, when I when I went to go visit my buddy, I was like, oh, I bet he'll want this, you know, PlayStation Mini. So yeah. I just brought it. I mean, it's the same reason I gave away my Genesis Mini. It's just like, I don't, you know, what am I going to do with it? You know, I'm like, that Tower of Power thing, like, it's neat. But, like, I have the actual Tower of Power. Like, right. what yeah. do I want that thing for, you know? Yeah. I mean, it was the I, same I can... thing. Like, I had pre-ordered. At one point, I had the Genesis Mini on pre-order so that I could stream with it, and then they ended up giving me one, so I canceled the pre-order. But that that's really the only reason I had it was, you know, like, I just felt like when me and you did that PlayStation stream, like, I just thought that went so well. I was like, well, maybe I'll just start streaming these things when they come out. But other than that, you know, it's like, you know, part of the reason for pre-ordering these is kind of like FOMO, you know, like what if it comes out and it ends up being cool and then I'm the one that doesn't have one, but I mean, that's why everybody's buying toilet paper right now, right? It's all just FOMO. <laughs> You're missing out on a clean butt. Uh, you got another $5 from Ben Brody who says, oh, that's so funny. I was about, I was about to actually ask Corey this, so now you did it for me. Um, he wants to know what is your favorite Turbo Graphics 16 game. I swear, if you say it is Space Harrier, okay, fine. What is your second favorite Turbo Graphics 16? Your favorite Turbo Graphics 16 game is not Space Harrier, is it? No, no. Okay, I, I, you know, so, I probably yeah. say it's so this. This game? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe Do you, okay. Would you make a different? Okay, first of all, what if we take? I know this is not what Ben asked, but uh, what if, if we if we took CD games out of the out of the running? So you only have the chip games to choose from. Two part question: What do you think is the best chip game? Well, what's your favorite chip game on the Turbo Graphics? And I asked if I asked you what you thought the best one was, would that be a different answer? If that makes sense. I want to say that know, maybe Legend of the Valkyrie is one of my is definitely one of my favorites. Um, I'd have to look at what I have over there to see. What, I mean, what I um, 
That's a PC engine, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking about just American Turbo Grab. Um, pro probably Bonk's Revenge. Yeah. I Wait, mean, your favorite or the best? Or both? Probably my favorite. I mean, I'm not sure if I would say it, it was the best. I mean, I... I think, like, I think Legendary Axe might be the best. Hmm. Uh, what about something like, like Dragon's Curse? I mean, even though that that's... Not like it's like a port of a Master System game or, or a remake of a ma of a Master System game. I mean, that was that is it's my preferred version of Wonder Boy Three. Mm -hmm. Basement Brother says uh, Air Zonk and Soldier Blade. Um, are you still making your videos, Basement Brothers? I feel like I haven't seen one pop up in my feed in a long time. At least for a while, he was making he was making videos about uh, he was chronologically going through the Neo Geo library, like making you know kind of like what Greg Seward's doing, I guess, with right. uh, Generation Sixteen. Like he was doing that with the Neo Geo library, and they were really good videos. But I haven't seen one pop up in my subscription feed in a long time. Sub Paranon says, I wonder if we'll ever see an FM Towns Marty Mini. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb and say no. Although something like a Sharp 68,000 Mini, I could see that being in Japan. I, But, I mean, if you have a mister, I think you could play Sharp X 68,000 game. Yeah, Reluctant Hero says best TurboGrafx 16 chip is Soldier Blade. See, I'd see. I I think my uh, I think my favorite TurboGrafx 16 chip game is Soldier Blade. But I think the best TurboGrafx 16 chip game might be Dungeon Four. Really? Yeah. I mean. I mean, Soldier Blade like definitely should be up there. But to be completely honest, I mean, I rarely put a ton of time into playing games that I don't own. Mm -hmm. You know, just like stuff off of EverDrive. Like, I, it's very, very rare yeah. that I will sit there and put a lot of time into something like that. Yeah. Uh, Sub Paranine, that's that's. What I said might be the is probably the best game on the system is Legendary Axe. Yeah, I mean, I would put Legendary Axe very high on the list. Legendary Axe 2 is also a really good game. So you got a $2 donation from RC, who says he needs a, he or she, I guess, needs a Virtual Boy Mini. Oh. Pretty much can consoles. guarantee that is never going to happen, but could you imagine? I mean, you could make a really sleek... Well, like you could make a virtual boy mini where you could just put on the headset like a pair of sunglasses. Yeah. Did you ever get to play uh, a virtual boy like when you, when it was no. No. when it was current? No. Nope. I got the one set up like a demo. I never owned up. anything in the the like in the in the boy line like like oh, no game well, i don't boy i don't mean if you ever owned one just like if you ever got to play one like you know a demo unit or you knew somebody that had one mm. it's, it's it's so cool to see working design's name on something that's new <laughs> oh we're playing cadet i didn't see you switch games all right yeah who are you really the ninja well that's a bold move cotton Paul Sutton gave you a dollar ninety nine and said, "Only real fans know Deb D Deb Da." Do you know what that is, Corey? I don't. So it's a code for Dungeon Explorer. Oh. I do have Dungeon Explorer. <laughs> it's calling me Core. Huh? What? 
Oh, oh yeah, because you can only put in four characters. Uh, we we streamed the arcade version of this one time. Yeah, how was that? I never played the arcade version. I mean, I know you have to keep buying time with by putting in quarters, but obviously, if you're just playing on main, that's not a concern. But like, how does it compare to the to this version? Oh, there's uh, Chris Tang is in the chat. Oh my oh, goodness. Yeah. That's actually a good idea. He said they can just make a Virgil, Virtual Boy cardboard. Is it Labo or Labo? How do you say? I think it's Labo. Labo? Oh, I didn't even think about that. Uh, make a Labo set for the Switch and call that the Virtual Boy Classic. That'd be kind of cool, actually. I mean, that'll never happen, Labo, obviously. Labo, but... Labo, Labo. I don't know. Hopefully it's not Labo. <laughs> Labo. Cheesemeister says it's Labo. Okay. Do they still sell those? I can't remember the last time I saw one of those things. That... I don't know. The uh, the Ring Fit Adventures is, is the new hotness, I guess. I it's like it's like the it's a, a fitness game. It's like an RPG fitness game, and I guess it's it's actually awesome. <laughs> but it's 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 Labo or Labo or whatever. No, I mean it's like a it's, its own peripheral. Oh, for, for the, the Joy Cons. Switch. But I I've heard people are really into it, and it's like out of stock everywhere now. And everyone, everyone is like, now that they are forced to stay home. I was going to say, you can't go to the gym anymore. Yeah. I have to say, like, I, like, the, uh, the input lag hasn't been a deal oh. breaker except for in, uh, Lords of Thunder for me. So far. I mean, I haven't, I don't feel like it's really hindered my experience that much yet. But Lord, Lords of Thunder is very, very apparent. I just feel like I'm more excited about the controller that I ordered than I am about getting <laughs> yeah, the system. The like, if that works with the Mistra, that's going to be awesome. Yeah. Although, I, I, I was yeah. just sent, uh, it showed up in the, in the, in the PO box as a, a Bliss box, which is a yeah. thing that is USB, but it can connect to like the mister and it has add-ons that uh -huh. uh, you can plug in like real controllers to it and you can do like oh, a really? turbo graphics one there's a uh Maybe I, I always hear that term bliss box but i didn't really know what it was but and i guess uh, it works with the the mister in the low latency mode so there's right there's no usb overhead or anything it's just like it's wire to wire you might want to get one uh you got a dollar 99 donation from robert Coogan, I guess. He says, any collecting tips on GameCube or Dreamcast? Um, what do you got? Man, well, I don't, yeah, know, I don't like know. I mean, for collecting on Dreamcast, probably like go back to fall of 2000. Yeah, I mean, I I feel like my collecting tip for anybody is going to be don't. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, I, GameCube's not as bad, but I feel like Dreamcast games are not something I really hardly ever even see die uh, in the wild. You know. Uh, oh, I was going going back to the controller thing. I was just saying that. Uh, yeah, I didn't know the Bliss Box was a thing. I should just get one. Uh, you know, I went, I ordered, you know, Retro USB, you know, like mm -hmm. the AVS people. Yeah. I ordered uh, an NES USB adapter and a Super NES USB adapter. The NES USB adapter works with my Mr. No problem, but the Super NES one does not. That's so, surprising. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why that would be, but Smoke Monster said that some of you know some of the USB adapters don't work, so there you go. But I think if I had known about, for some reason, I thought the Bliss Box just had something to do with using like an arcade. But um, if I knew that uh, that it was something to plug all your real controllers, I, I would have just bought. I, I don't even know where you get one of those. Um, 
sure I could. See, then if I get one of those, then I, I'm going to need a new uh, case, right? You have to, uh, for the, for what? For the. Well, like my mister has like a 3D printed case. So I'm saying that I'm not going to be able to use that anymore if I add another peripheral inside. Oh, the, you mean like something like the Bliss Box? Yeah, I'm talking about the Bliss Box. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, the Bliss Box is just like a, it's a USB dongle. What's interesting is that all the different pieces. How does that work? How, if it's USB, does it get around not having the USB overhead? Because it can, like, a specific drivers for it make it so it's oh. just like using. It's not actually using USB. It's a use. It's just like wire to wire, so it's like a direct connection. Uh, uh, what's uh, interesting gotta... though is that the U the USB adapter you plug in different adapters for different controllers, and uh -huh. all those connect via HDMI, hmm. which is kind of a weird connector to use for that, but the the analog DAC does something very similar where it uses the, the HDMI connector or the port to just like, hmm. as like a, a pipe for data instead of, I see. you know, audio well, and video. Smoke Monster saying Blissbox has add-ons for direct FPGA, direct FPGA access, but you have to use custom core builds. Well, oh, I'm definitely, they, they, they I'm definitely that not going to do website. that. So that sounds like a lot of work. Um, you got a two dollar donation from Luna White, who asks, "When do you think there will be an N64 Mini?" Well, first of all, do you think there'll be an N64? I think there will be one. I yeah. mean, I don't see why not. Yeah, I mean, maybe this Christmas. Really, that soon? Well, I mean, they, like the NES and SNES were announced in June, I think, of their respective years of release. Well, Smoke Monster is saying Bliss Box is just normal USB. Blister is the direct version, which they probably sent too. So did you get both of those things? Um, no, hang on, let me grab what it, what it is that they sent. Well, you don't have to... Boy, Spider's got some thunder thighs, man. I mean, especially with, like, the whole pandemic thing going on. I don't really see how we're getting an N64 mini by this Christmas. But, uh, I mean, as long as it's technologically feasible, I don't really see why it wouldn't happen uh, at some point. I mean, it would be a huge seller. Uh, I don't know you know, I think I... For me personally, I think I kind of um, under uh, underappreciated how popular the N64 is just based on like the launch video that I made. I think it that might be my second highest most viewed video now or something like that, um, which I never would have thought that would be the case. So that's that's the only thing that you got? No, it comes with like a different dongles and stuff. There's one for Super Nintendo. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying that's the only like thing that the dongles plug into yes okay so yeah it's the the gamer pro bliss box did they just send that to you without telling you it was coming no it just it was at the, at the PO box no they didn't, they didn't say anything about it wow but but they said it seems to when I looked it up, it seemed to say that it would work in, in the uh, on the Mister with within the low latency mode. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> gonna... Do we have any like final like two more games? Two. Two more games. It's I didn't even realize it was one a.m. here. Yeah. No. No. I was, I'm getting like tired <laughs> over here. When you said two, I was like, oh, not two. Okay. Like, well, not I mean... only two, but. But we should. I mean, you still got a lot of people watching, so. Um. I want to say in Toki, uh, Tokimeki, or how you say it, Tokimeki Memorial. Tokimeki. Um. I don't know which one that is. I've never played it before. Play 
Sapphire. I mean, that's kind of a crazy thing that we haven't there. played. Sa yeah, you definitely. Oh, there's ten. Well, they're next to each other. There you go. Well, okay. You should go Tokameki, and then that you should finish up with Sapphire. Like that's you know, that's playing the hit. That then you say, okay, good night, everybody. You know. <laughs> I have no idea what to expect from this. Konami. Konami. I'm just skipping all the intro stuff. Is it like a text adventure or something? I'm afraid it's going to be in like one of those uh, racy laser disc games or something. Probably. Hentai or whatever. <laughs> I'm just. Whose idea was this? I don't know. Two people said they wanted it. Hmm. That's very strange. No! Come on! What's going on? I don't know. I'm just... Is it making you put in your birthday? Probably. I don't know. It's like... Come on. Seems like, seems like this is porn. I, don't, I mean, I don't think this is. Hey, get your. You need to get your phone out and use the. Um... The Google Translate. Yes. No. I... Oh, now it's, it's it is like a text adventure. Why would I? Uh, why would anybody make you play that? No. I, I'm going too fast for translation. I don't, you know, I don't. I'll be here all night. <laughs> Basically, for this thing. Yeah, I think well, somebody, we saw may, it. somebody may have trolled you. Yeah. Ugh, I feel like I want to play Spriggan too. Spriggan. Spriggan. However, you want, however it's pronounced. Oh, so now we're getting a bonus game. Good. Yeah. yeah is it Spriggan or Spriggan? I don't know. Or none of the above. All right. Cheesemeister says Spriggan. Okay. That's how I've always. I mean, it. I like cheese a lot, so if a cheese meister says <laughs> something, I'm more inclined to believe it. <laughs> what do you want from me? The guy was a cheese meister. <laughs> Somebody says rhymes with friggin'. <laughs> it's friggin'. Oh, that friggin's friggin'. Yeah. Look at that parallax scrolling in the background. Yeah. You know, I feel like I should play Space Harrier on here as well. Yeah. As long as, long as we wrap up with, with Sapphire. Yeah. Somebody posted in the chat, so Bithead finally caved into a retro pie. Well, somebody sent him one. Someone should send him a mister. Uh, I don't think that's not a good idea. But it's not I, like he needs he needs something that's just like user well, friendly. Like well, somebody sent him a retro pie that was completely set up and ready to go, and you know. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, I love the mister and everything, but for someone like that, he's better off with it. Well, I feel like 
Oh, I... if, if it's already set up, yeah, I think it's really easy to update and keep it current. More so than a, like a retro pie is at this point. Uh, I mean, I, I, do I, I don't disagree with you. Like, I think it's, I mean, I think it's like super easy, but I think for some people, like, like he's not going to update it, you know, like, like that retro pie he got is never going to get updated just fine because it already has everything on it that he needs. Yeah. You know, I mean, hopefully he uses it. I'd like, I'd like to see more like Let's Plays or something from him. What? What's going on? Yeah, I don't know. I agree with where shit word. Uh, yeah, Brett two hundred million and nine says uh, Mister is actually easier to use than a retro pie once it's set up. I actually agree with that, only because like there's so much stuff like. Like, I mean, I have a Raspberry Pi that I don't ever use, but it's just like, depending on what setting you're trying to change, maybe right. it's in this menu or maybe it's in that thing. menu. Like, I, and... I ran into situations where like RetroPie, like I had to like, I, I downloaded an image already created for it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can really get in the weeds in the menu and like change yeah. something you didn't mean to change and can't figure out how to change it back. And maybe that's still, it's stupid to like feel that way. Yeah, but I, I there was one time where I just like did something and I could not change it back no matter what I did and I had to like reinstall the entire image. Yeah, <laughs> which is, is I'm stupid. Just, I, it's I'm stupid. just saying that for someone like Bithead, like he's never gonna want to change any of the settings. Like he's just gonna use it and like I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm just saying like it's set up and here you go and like I'm sure that he's just gonna be happy and use it the way it is and not want you know. Like maybe guys like us, like there's things that we're gonna want to change, but you know, other people are not necessarily like that. You know? Well, when it, I mean, that, I mean, if, if it default, I mean, I've downloaded images before and it defaults to like a bilinear filter, which I can't stand. Yeah. Like I want to change that right off the bat. But That's dude, like, like Bit Bithead play like when he's playing something for the show, like he has a Retron Five strapped to the back of his TV. And like he's playing retro yes. games in like sixteen by nine. Like, if there's a bilinear filter, he doesn't. He's not going to know it or care. I don't know if Chris Tang is still here. I know that he really likes this version of, of this, of this game. Chris H Tang, by the way, have oh. some respect. He's. If, I don't know if he's still here. He said that this is. I mean, he, he loves this version. I can. I can appreciate that, but it. I, I I love the Master System version a lot, and the fact that this like removes the checkered floor, which is is an iconic part of Space Harrier. The checkered. Board. Yeah, I don't care for that. Like, you gotta leave that in there. What? How do you feel? Uh, do you like the? Um, do you like Space Harrier Two on the Genesis? I mean, it's okay for what it is, but it is does not even come close to touching the original. I like the music. The music is, is a pretty good. It's like it's a different style for sure. But, Wait, uh, did, you used to have a Space Harrier cabinet? I did, yeah. Wow. Uh, when I moved, I though, I, I mean, I had that. I got it for real cheap. Yeah. It's it was it's kind of a funny story how it how it worked out. Uh, a friend of mine in Buffalo. When I was still living in New York, he, my friend from Buffalo was visiting, and we went to like a local like arcade pinball place. And I said, you know, if I could ever own an arcade machine, it'd probably be Sp Space Harrier. Mm -hmm. And then a week later, he, he calls me and he says, there is a guy 15 minutes away from me selling a Space Harrier cabinet for $100. Why? I mean, how can you say no to that? And and he says, uh, I will go and get it for you and hold on to it for as long as you want. And, you know, it's 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 fine. 
Wow. And he called the guy and said, you know, we already, I already had somebody who was like interested in coming to get it. Uh, they're supposed to come by tomorrow. If they don't come, uh, then it's yours. And that mm -hmm. person never showed up. Wow. So he went and got it and held onto it for a while. Mm -hmm. And I, when I moved out of New York, I was able to move it to the house that we rented then. And it was there for until we bought another house. And the only way I was going to be able to move it from that point was to take up to the third floor of that house. And that was just not going to happen. Yeah. So I sold it to a local barcade and it's still there. I can go play it anytime I want. Do they have like a little plaque on the marquee that no. says like this? No. <laughs> used to belong to a world famous My Life in Gaming, Corey. Well, I mean, this, there's a whole episode of the show that's about Space Harrier that in the very, after, after the ending credits is that machine getting taken away. That's very sad. That's not a good way to end your show. It is. I mean, it's 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 kind of a sad little bit. I mean, I don't know how what? many people in the chat have seen it, but it's it's a little sad bit, and it has a uh, kind of a ukulele version of the Space Harrier theme theme playing over it. Of them coming now, and getting I'm it. Watch that after the stream. Yeah. How often would you say you played that when you had it? Uh, probably two or three times a week, I'd say. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I never owned a arcade cabinet, and it is really sad now as I have like a perfect spot that it would have fit in. Yeah. I was just asking, I just don't find that I play my arcade cabinet very often, you know, because I just feel like I, this is a stupid attitude, I guess, but something about like turning on the arcade cabinet, it, it's like you're you're turning on this this big complicated machine and it's like you can't just turn it on and play it for 10 minutes and turn it off you know it's like it's like i'm powering up the whopper at norat you know and it's like <laughs> this has to be worth it for the machine for me to be like disrupting its slumber to turn it on and so like if i'm going to turn it on and like play arcade games for like an hour or two then fine but like if i'm just going to turn it on and like you know play one game of like you know pick a game and then turn it back off and it's like well why did i bother turning it on at first but that's sad because then I, I hardly ever play it this is a game that <laughs> i've never like really understood that much no same here Like, for all I know, maybe this is, like, a really awesome game. I mean, it seems like it's, you know, it's got some, you know, humor that appeals to me on my level. <laughs> but it just doesn't seem like it's a very good game, but maybe I just don't. I mean, a lot of reviews of this game are positive, but... It always felt like the original Wonder Boy to me. The Vitality or Adventure Island, I guess, as well. Except with, uh, except with poop. Yeah. I guess that's it. Oh, uh, Chris. Sorry, I talked to Chris Tang here, but uh, sorry, Chris H Tang. Um, no, I have the same thing. Like I have like plugged into the wall. It's not even a power strip. It's like I bought this thing that literally just has one female plug on one side and a male plug on the other side and you plug that into the wall and it has a, a rocker switch on it yeah so like if i want to turn on my system like i don't have to reach in there to turn it on it's not i'm not saying i'm like too lazy to turn on my my arcade cabinet i just feel like, like is there something in the, is it it's like a the dumb air? attitude but i just always feel like oh it's like wear and tear like i'm turning this thing on i shouldn't turn it on just for like two seconds you know even though like I'll go. I mean, it's kind of the same way, actually, with my uh, yeah, my big Sony BVM. Like, I'm like, I don't want to turn it on unless I'm gonna actually sit there and play for a while. I don't remember what I was supposed to do there. Like, I thought I was supposed to kick something like an invisible platform or something. Make sure that my check no light me. Do you remember what to do here? No, I don't. I have no idea what to do. 
Nobody in the, somebody in the chat must know what. I always thought there was like a hidden button or something like that. You could get... Oh well. I'm just kind of blasting through some of these now before I yeah. end it. Oh, Mario Mania 05 is saying run. Can you, is, can you, well, it's too late. Yeah. I don't know if you can run and jump in that game. Hey, what's with the, what's with the cover art for New Adventure Island? I, I what, what happened there? Yeah, that, I mean, that's not the real oh, oh. art. It, I wonder why, like, maybe they can't show Master Higgins for some reason. Oh, maybe. That doesn't make sense, though. Oh, it's an artist's right. Interesting. But then why like why wouldn't they be willing to just pay? Like how like how much would that artist be asking for? Because if you you know, if you say such a high price that the company's gonna say no, then you got nothing. Well probably like any amount is was too much for them. <laughs> for Konami, I'm guessing. Doesn't the Air Zonk I cover love the art? title screen music in this in that. You what? The title screen music in Air Zonk. Oh, like, no, no. I was just saying, like, the, the cover art for Air Zonk looks like it was drawn by, like, one of the artists that did the Garbage Pail Kids. Yes. And, like, I don't mean that in a bad way at all. Like, Garbage Pail Kids were awesome. But that just looks like that could be a Garbage Pail. Yeah, like what you are saying, saying about you know, probably a special case. Lords of Thunder is literally Mazumuni Shiro. Seems like they have, have some some without a problem. Well, it's Cheese Meister guy. You know, Cheese Meister again. He is a master of cheese. Uh, says the new Adventure Island cover artist was Susumu Matsushita, which I mean, that person is like famous for uh, these exact kind of licensing issues. So, mm. probably. Like, everybody these days knows, like, oh, you need to have some cover art done for your game. Don't get Tsuma Matsuchita because they're going to screw you. <laughs> they're going to screw you 30, 35 years later. That's not that's, true. That's, 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 I, like, I hope that's clear that this, I'm His main hobby is screwing people over 30, 30 years later. Yeah. that's they, he, He's, he's long, really big on playing the long game with that stuff. Somebody says, I hope Bithead 1000 reviews this. You know, that would actually be an interesting thing to do with the one that I pre-ordered would be to just send it to Bithead. You should. I bet you someone's already doing it, though. You think so? I don't... I mean, with the, with the videos he's made about the thing, like, I'd be curious to see, you know? I mean, he's already he's, made more in-depth like, videos about, the, about it before it even came out <laughs> than yeah. anybody else. He like ended up destroying his entire <laughs> entire set because of it. I, I I still have no idea what he was attempting to do when he was like duct taping the br end of the broom. Yeah. <laughs> like he, and he couldn't get it, whatever he was trying to do, he couldn't get the work, so he ended up like destroying the entire thing. That's how the um, the Operation Wallet Buster thing got destroyed, right? Oh, the, yeah. the, the pull down thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, it is funny that he just like leaves it there too. Yeah. It's really funny if you go back and watch some of his older videos. Like you can see like the evolution of that shed. Like yeah, that shed used to have like nothing in it, and like now it's just like so full of stuff. Like I, I mean, I remember like when I sent him that big gigantic sticker, and like he slapped it up on the wall, and like now you can hardly even see it anymore because he has all this <laughs> other stuff in front of it. But like. Just in general, that shed is so full, and when he first built it, you know, obviously it was it was like empty. Yeah. I don't know how he does anything in there with all the stuff he has piled up in there. But I mean, it sounds like that in like a corner of the basement is like the only space he really has in his house. So. You see, he doesn't have a cool wife like me or like you, where we get like pretty much the whole basement. Yeah, but also, like, in the location he lives, he probably doesn't have a, much of a basement. Or at least a finished basement. I wonder if he could, like, do that. Oh, I'm sure he could. I mean, his basement seemed pretty finished. Like, you know, he's got the couple of videos that he did down there when he first built his his desk. 
but it just seems like they have a lot of other stuff down too, you know. Like the the, the design of the of the bonk ship that I am right now, of the zonk ship is awesome. It's yeah, it looks like kind of a little bit of a Star Trek ripoff, kinda. Be dropping a bomb right there. What do you mean? No, it's the you have to hold down the other button and then you just oh, you can hold you it, you just keep you holding know. it down and eventually you drop a bomb. But like you sneak underneath some of the bosses and drop a bomb, um, uh, kind of a good way to help beat them. Yeah, the 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 Fina, uh artwork that he did just the way he does it is so cool yeah well the blue With, tape like the everything. layers i mean i don't even understand how you even plan something like that out it yeah. just like it clearly is like a portion of my of the human brain that i have no idea how to access or use like to plan something that detailed out like yeah layers I mean, he's, of colors he's ridiculously talented like you know, I said I said this to him I think one time in, in one of his comments on one of his videos. Like, the perfect job for Bithead would be like if he moved to like Hollywood and was like he could work in like the the movie or TV industry, being like a set builder guy, you know? Because like they could yeah. come to him and be like, "Hey, we need to, we need to have a thing that looks like whatever," and he'd be like, "Yeah, I'm on it." And then like 24 hours later. Like, you know, making props or building sets or something. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a good suggestion. Definitely. Well, he's always complaining he doesn't want to live in New York anymore, although I, I'm sure for the same reason he would hate living in Los Angeles. I just played... That's that's mostly what I played the other night on my live stream with New Toby. I love I the overworld music in it good game all right i guess i'll i'll go for it i could be up all night doing this i'd want to die tomorrow let's see, see he's got the the pro card well yeah that's cool I mean, you, it definitely. Is, you have a pro card. I do, yeah. Good. Uh, I mean, there's definitely like some issues with this, you know, sound lag and everything, and you know, mm -hmm. the scaling issues. But it definitely goes a long way to make up for it. Just like the the attention to detail, I feel like via like the the interface and just like how the interface and the interface looks and feels, I feel like there's yeah. a lot more passion. Mm -hmm. an interest on M2's part in making this than there was in, on the Genesis Mini. I mean, I said it during our Genesis Mini uh, discussion that I think that M2 is probably just sick of working on the same old Genesis games. I mean, I'm sure that's probably true, but I don't. you can't let that shine through in the final product. Definitely. I mean, it's, it's true. I mean, I don't think that that was the... Like, most people probably wouldn't think that when they when they saw it but i mean i look at how elaborate the menus are in this it just it feels like there's a, a level of excitement and passion in this yeah. that wasn't there yeah i think that's true in the chat feral inferno says i miss bithead smasher contraptions <laughs> yeah i liked Ga game von crush was a good one did you remember that one Corey game von crush that was like where he had, it was like that pneumatic thing where he had like the, uh, he made like an air tank out of like some PVC pipe and then he would charge up the tank with his <laughs> air compressor. And then it had like that metal, it was like this a metal uh, uh, rod that had like a little piece of L-beam on the end of it that he would just like put a cartridge on there and it would just like smash it in half. <laughs> I mean, I, that big, huge thing he had in the backyard for a while was pretty cool, but, I mean, he had to know that there was no way his wife was going to yeah. 
let him keep that, you know. Like, he was lucky he got to keep that as long as he did. I always like that, add to a clothesline. Yeah, you know, I, I asked him about that. Like, whatever happened to, like, the... the Because uh... what did he have? He had, like, the Wheel of Fate. <laughs> and then what was the other thing he had that was, like, Plinko? And then he had Ed 2 clothesline. And he ba he just said, like, yeah, at some point, I, I just threw all that stuff in the garbage. Yeah. Like, he could have given that to, like, a fan, and they would have thought that was, like, the coolest thing ever, you know? Yeah. Like, hey, I'm not using But I mean. You you talked about how that's the, the same thing that's happened with you, where you had, yeah. you had like written neat, handwritten right. notes, of, like when you're do like making yeah. like a launch so episode. Yep. And you threw it out, but it, I mean, there's people yep. that probably would have loved to have that stuff. Yeah, but I think that, you know, I think that Bithead and I both sort of Pegasus. Thank you, Pegasus was the Plinko thing. Uh, I think Bithead and I both kind of feel the same way about our respective shows, and that like I don't think my show is a big deal at all. So it's like, why would anybody want like my handwritten notes from my last show? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, part of it, like I would feel like, who the hell do I think I am that like, like I'm gonna take my show notes and like put them in the mail and send them to somebody and yeah. have them that that's cool you know like get over yourself but then people got pretty upset when i threw away all those cds with all that recorded gameplay footage on i i'm i'm sorry that i'm so terrible at this i mean i'm not this game's not easy man i'm flying right into it I mean, I, I don't notice the lag too much here, even, uh, even though I should be noticing it more. I just feel like the ship moves slow enough that it's, I, I, like there's no way to toggle your speed in this, is there? The select doesn't seem to do it. Um. No, Nightwolf, I was talking about, I, I used to record gameplay footage on the DVDs for my show before I had a capture card and I had a huge spindle full of all the recorded gameplay footage on those DVDs and at some point I just I took a I like spread them all out on my table and took a picture and put it on Twitter like for posterity and then I just scooped up all the DVDs and threw them in the garbage can apparently I should have sent them to Corey I think is what he's getting <laughs> I think Corey's probably my biggest fan Well, you know, I, I do, I fund you on Patreon because I like the magazine read through so much. Yeah. Well, you didn't even mention, you didn't even tell anybody that we were doing one. Yeah. Well, hopefully the first of many. We were supposed to yesterday, but we were both unprepared for it. You can't do those things when you're not prepared, you know? Yeah. Well, especially when it's issues of the magazine that are not in the, not from the country that you you live in. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. I mentioned oh, yeah. on, on the stream on Sunday that yeah. uh, probably like spoiling the surprise, but that you're going to be doing a like a totally straight read through of. Oh, man, I, I, I spoiled it because I, I just couldn't help it. Of, uh, like, That's actually like the, something I should do now while I'm home more. You yeah, know? I mean, the thing the thing is six pages long. It, yeah, I don't think gonna it's going to be that tough. tough. You could probably finish it in a day. Honestly. Oh, for sure. I probably. I mean, I have to. I don't even remember what games are in there, but I probably already have the gameplay footage. You know, that that's one nice thing about doing my show is I'm getting to the point now where I have a bunch of gameplay footage now on the hard drive, so mm -hmm. that. When I go to do something like that, I don't have to record everything from scratch. I'm gonna play one more time. Uh, yeah, I'm, I used to have VHS tapes of gameplay that I had from when I was a kid, and even though the only person who would even enjoy seeing stuff like that is, is myself, but of like of of your own gameplay. I remember yeah. specifically there was a playthrough of Road Avenger that I had recorded, wow. and a playthrough of 
UN squadron on the Super NES, and I came incredibly close to finishing it for the first time during that during that recording session. And I lasted so long against the final boss, where I was had no more hits left, and I survived for way longer than I should have. The last I wasn't able to do it. Damn. Sub Paranon says, I used to make my own soundtrack cassettes of Genesis oh. music using the sound test menu. That was, that's smart. That's like use genius. And why, I don't know. Why did I never, like, I mean, I had a Walkman back then and, and I listened to cassette tapes. Like, why did I, I never even thought of doing that. Really? I, I did one for Mega Man 2. Oh, uh, what's really funny is, uh, is Try has a whole bunch that he made when he was a kid. And he also, like, made full like cover art and everything from like like hand drawn wow. cover arts of like of like Nintendo characters. And he still has all that? Yeah. Wait, how how was he making like I mean, cuz you know what Sub Paranon's saying like like so many Genesis games had that sound test menu. But how was he doing with NES games? He's probably just starting the level and sitting there. Oh, just just standing. I mean, that's how I did it with Mega Man. My I always joke about it cuz I mean, sometimes it comes up during our streams and I remember mine when I recorded Mega Man 2 and I would like let it play for a little bit and then I would like say the character's name. Really? And I the one I always just remember is me saying is me whispering essentially into the boombox just saying Bubble Man. <laughs> I don't know why it's funny and it, it sticks with me, but I don't... even after I did it I was like why did I do that? Yeah. Bubble Man. Bubble Man. <laughs> that's exactly what it was was like. Yeah. So yeah. I. I don't know why that's so funny. <laughs> Specifically, that it was Bubble Man that I remember yeah. saying that. Like if you had said Metal Man, that wouldn't be funny. Well, I probably I did. Bubble I mean, I I definitely did, but I mean, the one I remember saying it, and the yeah. way my voice sounded when I said it was Bubble Man. But you don't have that tape. No, no, no. It's probably in a landfill someplace. You know what, what I wish I had is like me and my friend, uh, you know, my friend Jonathan that I talk about on my show a lot. Like we used to, we would pretend we were like, uh, like DJs, but like, you know, morning zoo DJs, not, not like, like we weren't just spinning records or anything. We were, we were doing more like, you know, like a, like a morning show kind of thing where it was all just like stupid, like shtick and and like we would both sit in front of one of our boom boxes and just put a tape in there and hit record and just start, you know, screwing around like we had our own radio show or something. <laughs> yeah, we don't have those any I I'm sure if I listen to that now it would just make me cringe real bad, but at the same time, like we had so much fun doing. I did something similar with my brother where we would make uh Well, he would always make uh, James Bond adventures and he'd use sound effects from the movies yeah he's the music to tell the story as well mm -hmm. and i would do i did the same thing but with uh it was godzilla that'd be cool it's interesting that you know because jonathan and i used to do a lot of stuff like that and it, interestingly like he ended up becoming an actor and then i ended up you know well i'm not professional youtube person but you know we both kind of ended up in the in the field of entertainment yeah to some uh what do you know what kind of stuff he's been in like acting wise um i mean mostly like he does a lot of like uh like i've seen him in like national commercials like i've actually seen him on a tv commercial I'm like oh that's jonathan um <laughs> And he, I, he's, he was in like one movie I forgot. Like he had a really small part in like a major theatrical release. But then like, you know, and he's been in like a lot of student films and whatnot. But like mostly what he does besides commercial is commercials is like industrial films. Which you know I guess you're not going to get famous doing that. But at the same time, it's, it's like it's steady work, work I think because he's become known as someone who does that. You yeah. know, so he keeps getting more jobs doing that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, like, that kind of stuff is always neat. When yeah. somebody you know is, like, on this 
like in something. Yeah, well, I just remember it was like I mean I told this story somewhere else before, but like, you know, at my you know I've, I've mentioned like I, I used to have this job where I had to travel a lot, mm -hmm. and uh, I was in Helena, Montana, and um, I ate at this place that was like, it was it was a fried chicken joint and a casino. Uh, because apparently in Helena, Montana, everything is a whatever it is, and then also a casino. Because I guess <laughs> some certain level of gambling is 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 legal there. So this was like, oh, it's this famous fried chicken place, but you go in there, and then there's all these like gambling machines everywhere. But but anyway, um, I mean, I don't know. So I, I ate there for dinner, but then for lunch, I was in I was in at lunchtime. I was in Salt Lake City doing some other thing. And I ate at some other place that was kind of like super sketchy. So I don't actually know which place gave me food poisoning. But um, like I woke up in the middle of the night that night, like and I just thought I was going to die. Like I felt so awful. <laughs> and then like the next day I woke up and I was, you know, I, basically it was like I had something to do in Salt Lake City. And then I, I was supposed to go to Montana and just go to bed and then wake up the next morning and then go do the thing I had to do there. And I, the next morning, I still felt so horrible, like there was no way that I could go anywhere. And so I was just like laying in bed watching TV, and this commercial comes on for, um, you remember? I mean, I'm sure they still have the commercials, but it's like, um, it's that auto insurance company called like the General. Yeah, yeah. And there's that little cartoon General, and it's like, uh, uh, I forgot the jingle about you know, calling and saving time. I don't know, whatever. But it was this commercial for the general and and like I sat up in the bed real quick and I'm like, is that Jonathan? But then the commercial was over and it was gone. <laughs> and, I, and I didn't know if it was Jonathan or not. And then later I saw that he posted something on Facebook that was like like he had taken a picture on the set or something. And I was like, holy crap, that was you, you know. And then I only ever saw the commercial a few more times. But I thought that was pretty neat, you know. Well, he was on a general auto insurance. Or... This the first level music for this is one of my favorite I... game musics. Piece Sorry, I missed game. I missed when you switch games. Uh, what is this? I, this is a uh, Legend of the Valkyrie. Oh, this is what you Val said. Valkyrie no this... Densetsu. Yeah, this is what you said might be your favorite PC Engine game. Yeah, I mean it's, yeah. it's pretty awesome. I've never finished it. I played through most of it during a stream one time and came close, but... I, I love this first level. Is it like a like a Zelda kind of game, or I, I just don't know anything about it? Uh, no, it's more just like an action game, but it has, you know, like some power up system where you, I don't know, it's you you find specific power ups that you like keep them for the the whole game, I think. I see. But it has like. Like shops and stuff. But I got myself in a situation where it was just extremely difficult to advance based on the weapons that I had. Oh. And then, like, you can't. Is it like one of those things where it's like you're past some kind of point of no return or something? Yeah, you might as well just start over and try to get like a so. better weapon. That happened to me, like... Did you ever play Golden Sun on the Game Boy Advance? Uh, I played through, like, a quarter of it. Like, I got that game... Uh, I don't know, somewhere... Somewhere around when it came out, it was, like, one of my first Game Boy Advance games. Because I didn't get the Game Boy Advance, like, right when... And, uh... And I got Golden Sun. And I really liked it. Like, I, I played pretty much all the way through it, but then, like, I got to the end... You know, and it's like, here's your last chance to, like, save your game before, like, the final boss battle. Mm -hmm. But, like, I hadn't done enough grinding or something. Like, I, I basically was not powerful enough to beat the boss, but it was, like, 
you couldn't go back from where I was. Like, I was basically just screwed. So, um, and, and, you know, you're talking about, like, you know, I don't know how many hours it, I couldn't remember. I, for some reason in my head, like, every role-playing game takes 40 hours to beat. So, yeah. like, you know, if that's what it was, it's like you basically have to start over because, like, you know, I, I had saved over my old save file, right? So it wasn't like I could just go back and reload an older save. Which kind of sucked, because I'd gotten all the way to the end, and I was like, well, now I can't even beat the game. Uh, but I really, I mean, I enjoyed that game so much. Like, I, it's kind of funny, I wasn't even, like, mad at the game. I was just, like, mad at, like, the, the, the situation happened. But um, that's kind of like one of those games I wouldn't mind going back and playing, just for, like, the nostalgia of it, you know? Yeah. What are your thoughts on Fantasy Zone? You, you like it? I like it a lot. Yeah, it's it's such a weird game and it's it's amazing how much easier having rapid fire makes the entire game oh yeah i feel like with this game you have to have rapid yeah i mean it's your hand will get worn out yeah playing this your thumb but this game, it's so interesting in that this game is so like cutesy and cartoony that you load it up and you're like oh look at this and look how cute it is and then it just like beats you mercilessly yeah like I, I like that. You but know? if you if you have rapid fire, it's like it's fairly yeah, it's not easy bad, just to rapid. blast through at least half the game quickly. Yeah, that's why like it's not bad on the turbo graphics because then you just turn on the the turbo switch and you're good oh, to go. That... Of course, you don't have that right. No. But for just twenty four ninety nine, you could. You, so did you not order? You didn't order a controller, and it just hasn't gotten here yet. Like you just didn't. No, order I, I ordered the controller, but I ordered the controller from the U.S. Oh, wait, is there a U.S. controller? No, I mean it's it's just from U.S. Amazon. Like they just had it. But I'm saying they didn't. They did not make a. a you can't buy a separate controller. I'm asking. I'm not saying this statement, but I'm saying. I'm, I'm sure I, you can. I only saw I on didn't. Amazon. It was like you can buy the Turbo Graphics, but if you wanted another controller, the only one that I saw. Is was PC like the white PC Engine controller, so yeah. I just ordered that because like I like the way that looks anyway, so it's like no problem for me. But but do you think? I mean, when you get the Turbo Graphic, okay. well, I guess I don't know if you're getting one, but do, does the the US Turbo Graphics Mini like that controller must have Turbo, right? Hello. Oh yeah, sorry, I was just I was. So, hang on. I was saying, I was reading what Chris was saying. Uh, Corey, start the game and hold select oh. special for a, a special report of Fantasy Zone. So, yeah. it's like a totally different game. Or just like With a awesome music in all caps. Oh, wow. Look at this. This is like way different. Dude, that looks, that looks pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but people I don't know in the if chat said that, yes, it almost US makes it more. Effort appealing to have these uh like the, the the unique versions of the controllers that are that like you know turbo graphics 16 will have that i uh, mean yeah if you're in yeah i mean i don't i don't personally i i wouldn't it wouldn't do anything for me to have the version of the controller that doesn't have turbo but um but i think it's cool that you know that i'm going to get the white pc engine controller with the turbo like i'm happy about that but again, I, I really bought that because I'm hoping that I can use it. If that ends up not being the case, then that's going to end up being kind of a useless item. <laughs> I can't believe how much how different this is. It has the map and the map and everything. I mean, this is a. I mean, clearly, this is like their familiarity with. With, with this series in particular. Yeah. Did you buy any of these? Um, wasn't there two of them that came out for the 3DS? Uh, M M2 releases? There was yeah, at least yeah, yeah. one. I thought there was two. Uh, no, it was only their version of, of two. Oh. Did you get that? It's a very... I'm sure you might. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's very a very good. good release on that. I mean, I have the... the it's in the... PS2 version, uh, PS2 uh, classic collection of it. Yeah. came out in Japan, the Sega Ages. Yeah, I don't ever 
my PS2 version. But but it's, it it's nice. great. I mean, it, the that version is. You know, you can even play it in 240p, which is kind of nice. Yeah. I mean, you remember, like, they said that they made that version of Fantasy Zone 2, uh, like, on their own. Like, they just, uh, Naoki Hori funded it himself. He said it mm-hmm. cost about as much as a, as a new car to make. So it's not bad. True. But, I mean, it's just funny that they were so passionate about doing it that that's what he did. Yeah. Because it was only on the Master System before that. This is pro- I'm probably going to finish it with this one. I'll try and see if I can at least beat the first level. I can't believe that this went as long as it did, but I guess we didn't start till a lot later than, than we normally start. True. I guess like whenever we stream together, we always have a habit of going way later than we intend to anyways. I think. Yeah, you think our streams last longer than when you just do it with Try? Well, unless I'm playing Mario 3. I was I was played Mario 3 and I, everyone was insisting that I, that I finish it, and I was up until like wow. 3 a.m. finishing it. That's pretty cool, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's fun. I mean, this seems like a really good port of those. Things. I wonder if this could be played on real hardware, if this ROM could be extracted and be played on real hardware. Oh, that's a good question. I guess time will tell. Yeah. I mean, the same goes with the with uh, Gradius and Life Force. Like I'm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you I'm know sure those ROMs get will get extracted, and... but whether or not you can actually play them on like an EverDrive or something. See. I guarantee you that this, that they probably are because they they have a way of doing that, which is putting the ROMs on there mm-hmm. that people can extract. I mean, they did it with the collection of mana. You can pull mm-hmm. the the English version of Trials of Mana off of it. It was the same way with the Genesis Mini with the, the Tetris and uh, the, the unique uh, Darius or Darius or Darius version that was on there. Basement Brothers is asking, was the was the Gradius one just a different soundtrack? I think it's just a soundtrack. Chris Tang saying, I'm really looking forward to the Salamander near arcade report. That's true. You didn't check that one out, did you? It's, it's not on here. It's only on the core graphics, right? Oh, oh yeah, that's right. I mean, I guess if they have multiple versions of it, that's one way to get people to buy. <laughs> yeah. Buy a, a, a second or third time. I feel like that's like people. I think are more likely to buy both of them just because they look different, though. Like. Definitely. If oh yeah. Just them on the shelf. I think the fact that it comes with one extra. I mean, it's not even really an extra game, right? It's just a game that has, oh, this one's got slightly improved something on it. Like, that seems oh, like kind so of a silly it's, thing it's to do. But I feel like it's on the it's on the yeah. core graphics and turbo graphics. So, yeah, that... yeah, but I'm just saying the fact that you're basically selling three different, you know, physical versions of the same thing, you're already going to get a lot of people buying more than one, and some yeah. people probably buying all three just because of the fact that, you know, they look different and the packaging looks different. And, like, just having, like, an enhanced version of one ROM on there, I, don't, I just don't know why how... Did it, uh... Why did I die in the second level and just send me back to the level before that? Maybe uh, I just try to that? teach you a lesson. I don't know if it's working. 
is did it just glitch? Because I was on the second level, and now it just sent me back to the first level. I mean, or the background is is of the first level. Am I crazy? It seems like that could be a glitch. I'm waiting for anybody to. Yeah, where's Chris Tang? <laughs> yeah, I want to... that's what I'm saying, Paul Sutton. It's trying to get him to get good, but. He says you're ready clearly for level not two. ready for level two. <laughs> well, I want to see if it gives what boss it gives me. Oh, that's a good question. I'm guessing you're going to get the level one boss again. No, it's then it's. Did it really send me back a level? It certainly appears that way. Maybe that's how it how it works. I don't know. I think you know. I think you just kind of just need to like stop sucking. Oh, I'm oh I'm playing in two player. I'm so dumb. I don't know why I was playing in two player. Did I? <laughs> I mean that's kind of cool though. Yeah, but that's incredibly stupid that I did not know that somehow. I don't think it's that big of a deal. <laughs> Sorry, that's like... I had no idea that was the case. It only confused me because there's exactly as many enemies to kill on the, on the map yeah. as there was in the other... as the first player. Well, maybe not. Just think, if you had if you had turbo, you probably would have beaten the game. But I'd be definitely a lot further than I am. Game overs. Yeah, Chris, it was because I was, uh, it's two players. Okay, so if you hit select, it switches to two players. So I must have hit it when I was doing the select press plus starting the game. Uh, Paul, I think that that Chris Tang tried a bunch of Hori controllers and nothing worked. Uh, I know, I I know that there was like images of that the eight bit Do controller was was leaked online. I think that's for the mini. Hopefully, there is one coming for the actual real system too. Smoke Monster says he can rock Popeye Arcade. I'd like to see that in his live stream. Probably. Maybe he did already then. Well, did anybody in, that watched the stream tonight decide they wanted to buy this? <laughs> I wonder if anybody decided they wanted to buy it. Or if more people were yeah, like if you, convinced you think they you wanted to not buy it. Thing. I mean, honestly, watching this live stream made me a little bit less excited about mine, to be honest. But yeah, I mean, this is really the last plug and play I think that needs to come out. You don't, you don't think the N sixty four is a? Oh, of course, I didn't think about that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess the... there is that. That's true. Yeah, I don't. Hmm. I mean, I. I... Think of what else, you know? I it, there's it is it is totally fine for for yeah. exactly what it's uh, supposed to be. I wish that the scaling options were were different. Just make it like a multiple of like in each game, not just have it like a one size fits all. 
Game Boy Mini, that would be cool. I could I could see how they could do that, you know, like make it a plug and play system, you know, so that you're still playing it on your TV. Game Boy games. Yeah, that would be, that'd you, know, be cool. you could you could have the controllers look kind of like the Super Game Boy controller. Yeah. You know, like they look like the bottom half of the Game Boy or something. That would be really cool. I bet that would sell well too if you made it like if it had like Game Boy and Game Boy Color games on it. Although I don't know, I, would they do something like that? I can't see them like, like, could you ever see Nintendo like? Well, I guess it's no different than Virtual Console, right? Like, if if they released like something like a Game Boy Mini and it had like the old Pokemon games on it. Yeah, I mean, because I would think they would think like. I mean, they, that, think, like, oh, I mean, they could probably release them. a system that just had Pokemon games on it. Oh, they a hundred percent could do that. Like you a, lot, could just a lot of people would be really excited about it, you know, just have Pikachu. every single version up through the Game Boy Advance version. Yeah. And have it so that the games could, could trade within each other. Mm hmm See, send... they should give us jobs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um But yeah, I mean Sound sound delay, running, bad scaling. Is this running in like some kind of teaser mode or something? What's that? Is the system running in some kind of teaser yeah, mode? Yeah, yeah, it runs a bunch of stuff. Oh, that's cool. Uh, the game selection is 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 pretty cool though. I think I think there's a lot of good stuff on here that people will would be excited to have, like a lot of cost prohibitive stuff. Yeah, to have the real thing. I mean, just having Sapphire and, and Rondo of Blood on, those yeah. are, you know, that's a huge deal. But like I said, I think the people that were in the market for this already know they're going to buy it. I can't imagine it's selling to, like, outside of... I mean, not that it even matters, like, who's, who's going to buy it and who's not going to buy it, you know? Like, sales mm -hmm. for something like this to, like, you and I mean absolutely nothing. You know, you'd, you'd want people to check it out, but I don't think that people are going to... Like, people that know they want it already have pre-ordered it. Yeah, I think that's true. And I think beyond that core group, I don't think that they're going to they're gonna sell a lot. Um... Chris, I think you can turn that off. Uh, really quick. He's so saying, I wish I could turn off the... The game ruins endings? No, it's it just like makes it so that the screen dims. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I see. You're saying while you're sitting there watching an ending of a game, dims the screen. Yeah, that would be... Uh... That would be... Funny. Right here. So if you hit run, you can turn off screensaver. During the in the wallpaper, I assume that that's what it is. The screensaver, you can turn that off. Uh, so it might be just something else. Um. Try another USB controller option for it. Um, yeah, I, I, I can plug in the Avid Doe Genesis Mini. It was it's meant for the Genesis Mini. I'll do that as like a wire. What are you plugging in? Oh, oh, got it. No. Need, like, 
that's that's my control preferred controller for the uh for the mister. The M30. Well I think that's gonna do it. <laughs> so like it's almost like two o'clock now. And I hate myself in the morning. Really? Because you still have to get up at the same time because your kids, right? Yeah, I mean they're just, they're loud. I feel bad if I sleep in too much. Yeah, like what time do you? What time do they usually wake you up? I mean, like between seven thirty and eight. Well, that's not so bad. Yeah. I mean, when you go to bed at two, yeah, it's, it's yeah. a short night. So I'm not saying it's not. I just I was afraid you were gonna say like six or six thirty. <laughs> There you got one final, one final donation, two dollars from RC. So stay healthy, guys. Thank you. I, I, you, you too. I hope everybody stays, stays safe and healthy in these curious and dangerous times. Wash your hands. Yeah. I've been washing my hands so much they're all dry. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, I I didn't even look at the stats. But I mean, how many how many viewers? Did you I mean, you peaked there? at over six hundred. Really? Oh yeah. Well, maybe we should do some <laughs> more streams. Like we have something to, to talk about. Hopefully, everybody liked the the entire uh, unboxing aspect. I could probably get that set up where I could do that more often, stuff like that. You could probably switch the view back to the two frames. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm just no. Uh, All right. Um, but yeah, thanks to everybody who hung out, everybody who donated, and thanks to Chris for hanging out and sticking with me for so long on this. No, thank you, man. I mean, this was like four hours or maybe more. No, was it? <laughs> oh, no, you're right, it was. Wow. That's, a, I mean, for me, I think that might be a record. Yeah? Yeah. I usually tap out after about two and a half. <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll, uh, let's, I'll see you on Sunday. Good night.